Okay, session 69. Uh, Cold Lands, Hope and Despair. As Rand already put it, this is uh, to commemorate, I guess, the day after Valentine's Day, session 69. So you're welcome. A little bit uh, <laughs> perturbed uh, humor for the stream. All right, so in our last session, our last session was technically a, uh, a one-shot, uh, more like a side quest, to where uh, Diddy was convinced that there were slotty underneath in the tunnels, potentially digging the way towards the center to where the Jim Corps extractor was uh, uh, being built. Uh, to He was had such conviction in that thought that he spent uh, a whole encounter in, inside the keep guarding it while everyone else was out there uh, trying to... Uh, stop the onslaught of the Slotty and the Centaurs and Knolls and everything else that was attacking the city. So, uh, after everyone else went back and took a, uh, a much-needed long rest on the campsite to what that Twig had set up with everybody, with the exception of Silith, Toman, and uh, Buttercup, which were, I guess, comfortably is probably the word to use, were set up uh, uh, in the barracks and being kept under lock and watch because they were believed to have been infested, infected, whatever you want to call it, uh, by the Slotty. Um, they shared that information, I think, with the uh, um, uh, the local town healer or doctor, whatever you want to call him, and he was going to look into it, but there was he could see no signs of them being infested as of yet, but that didn't mean anything. He wasn't sure what the uh, in in gestation period, is that the right terminology, is for these things to start showing up. So, hence the reason why I kind of kept them under lock and key to kind of uh, watch them for a while. So, anyway, last session, Diddy um, met with Jodell and Kudwar and told him of his plans to go down to the uh, the mines to uh, investigate that, find out about these missing miners, and see if that was somehow tied to the slotty trying to get down to the Jim Corps extractor. Uh, Kudwar uh, asked for a few volunteers in town, uh, to which he got a few. I'm going to go off memory here, so I don't have them in front of me. Uh, he had Tidak, the uh, the gnome, I guess, head of the bouncers. Uh, that was played by uh, Don last time. Uh, also got uh, Gubrick Rockberry. He was like the uh, the head foreman of the mines himself. That was played by uh, my uh, Rich. <laughs> yes. Uh, you guys also had uh, Pofez, another little gnome. That uh, was played by Quorn last time. And I know I'm missing somebody. Who am I missing? There was somebody else, I thought. John Path. Yes, John Path. John Path Morning Itch. Uh, that was actually uh, uh, Anthony's or Silith's, soon-to-be father-in-law. Uh, he went down to the mines with them as well. And, was, and Diddy was obviously part of that as well. Diddy was going to bring uh, Usul's tiger with him, except uh, he made it probably about halfway down to the mines before the tunnels started getting too small and the tiger could no longer fit through it. matter of fact, Diddy had a, a little bit of a tight fit getting through some of the areas through there. But yeah. long story short, they made it to, they found an old section of like a uh, newly dug, dug into that area, and they were attacked by uh, a small band of umber hulks. During that attack, uh, they eventually, after like three or four unsuccessful rolls to figure it out, they eventually heard the voice of the, the long lost Gillard Grinwater. Uh, Gillard was a former member of the Circle of Leth within Mucklestones. That had been gone for, I can't remember if I said a year or two years, and it was believed that he left his wife and daughter for a younger gnome and just up and left town. Um, during the battle, I don't think anybody fell. It was actually pretty uh, easily handled by, by you guys, despite the fact that uh, some of you had rode your eyes and some of you didn't. Uh, but in the end, you guys eventually um, discovered Gillard hiding back in the back, and he shared with you how he. Uh, well, at first he didn't really remember anything. He was afflicted with some kind of disease. Was I'm not sure you guys ever really, really verified what it was, but you guys were able to cure it. And long story short, he basically went down to the mines a long time ago to find a special gem for his lady, which oh, crap I can't remember her name. The, the two ladies that run the uh, the magic shop that uh, was originally flirting with Diddy before you guys went down. Uh, that was his wife and his daughter. He went down there to find them a, a, his wife a special gem for their anniversary. He ran into some Umber Hulks, and then he fled uh, through some of the tunnels by befriending one of the, the Umber Hulks. And since then, he's been on the run ever since, trying to find his way back uh, to Mucklestones. And during that time frame, he got afflicted with whatever this thing was that, that affected him and, and altered his mind and his memory. 
and uh, he's just ecstatic to be back. Uh, you guys saved him. You found uh, a chest down there. You found some remains of some of the miners that were missing. Uh, you also found a uh, pretty good stash of uncut diamonds that I think Diddy and Gubrick probably spent a little bit of time to uh, uh, extract from the wall down there. Um, as part of the, the the stuff you found in the chest, I can't remember exactly what you found. The biggest thing I remember is the uh, the bill of sale you found for a magic item. It was it belonged to the, one of the guys that went missing. Uh, he's the most freshest of the corpse you guys had down there. We kind of role played uh, cliff notes at the end. You guys brought that back, uh, shared with the family the remains and the bill of sale. And they, in turn, agreed to give that magic item that he had procured or secured, whatever, to one of the members uh, that was going to be heading to Limbo soon to stop this whole Centaur slotty raid thing. And that's how Toman got his uh, plus two uh, bladed crossbow. Okay? Yeah. So I think that's... Did I miss anything from the last session, guys? What did we no. do? That out. I'm sorry. What gems did we get him appraised? Does uh, did he have a bunch of them now? Yeah, I, I I picked them up and I I can use. I'll um. I'll keep the gems and I'll say to the uh, to the. Can help you know fat that uh, that uh, gem that you wanted looks like you might need to take care of business <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell him I'll do that for you All right, so if you're wanting to it's Valentine's Day <laughs> if you're wanting to convert these 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 diamonds these rough diamonds into finished diamonds it's going to be like probably an all day if not a two day ordeal for you to kind of uh, refine them all down is that your yeah, intention look, or you want to sell them as is or do you want to use them as is what's your intention Oh, for me, I can use. Just need at the moment. I've got six um, um, amounts of um, value of gems. It's going to make them even more, more valuable, I suppose. So you know, every day when we're having a rest, I'll cut the, a, a gem. Okay. My best. Give it by, and you know, uh, that's that's what I'm trying to do. But every to break break it down into. Of hundred gold piece lots, if I can that amount. Um, if not, I'll drop down to the three hundred, and if not, just the dust worth three. Okay. And I think I, I shared with you guys that uh, when you guys brought that back, that uh, either Gubrick or Cudwire, maybe both of them, would have recommended that part of that stash be given to the the families of the missing miners. So, were you going to honor that, or were you going to keep all of it and be a money hungry <laughs> bastard? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> more than oh yeah, paladin. No, more than happy. I, I'll say um, that's a brilliant idea, and, and um, I for them so they're worth even more money, and I'll give them to them as I finish them. Okay, all right. So and I'll, let, I'll, I'll say to them unless you want, unless you want me to give it to them now. I say <laughs> up to them. No, we'll, we'll role play that most of that happened last night. Once you get out of the mines around midnight. So with the reuniting of uh, Gillard with his wife and his daughter and the, uh, the meeting of the family of the, uh, the missing and everything like that. So yeah. once that was done, would you eventually head back to the campsite with the rest of them, Diddy, to take your long rest? Or is there something else that you were yeah. wanting to do? No, exactly that. I, I, would, I would just thank the guys and, and say to, uh, uh, to Jordell, uh, like I was hoping I was wrong, and I was. It was no one. Yeah, okay. the bad thing, but we've managed to reunite a family. So happy about. It. I'm gonna go and go to sleep in the tavern. So, okay. uh, where everyone else. All right, just a quick point of order. Is anyone else having trouble hearing Diddy, or is it just my end? He's kind of breaking up a little bit. I can hear you pretty good. A bit. Sounds good on my end. Okay. Yeah, he sounds good. Because all you guys sound clear as day, but for some reason when Diddy starts talking, I, I miss it a little bit. It's not bad, but. No. Uh, just seems a little odd to me. Okay, Brian, stop fine. making fun of his accent. <laughs> <It's> not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's well, it. Some people have difficulty with accents, so you got to give them some leeway. Right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Um, how many spell points do I have now? So it's your total slots plus your level, right? Or half your level. Uh, Paladin's a little bit different. 
I have to look. Matter of fact, I think it's if you look on your character sheet mm -hmm. on your spells, I think yep. it's on your very last uh, like on level nine section. Yeah, it says uh, equal spell slots plus half your paladin level. So is it slots as in a third level one is three or just one? No, every spell like you have four first level spots. That's four. Four. You have three oh, gotcha. yeah. second yep. level. That's three more. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've slots. worked it out fine. I've got I've got fifteen, so that's fa fantastic. Okay. All right. So that's just gone up one. Yeah. All right. Any other questions on that kind of stuff from the gallery? Nope. Okay. Quick mic check. Jason, you're still there, right? Yep, I'm still here. Okay, awesome. All right, so you guys, uh, are you going to wake anybody up for your long rest, or are you just going to come in and crash and tell them in the morning what happened, Diddy? Oh, I'm going to not wake anyone up. I'll just crash and tell them in the morning. Okay. All right. All right. So, during the long rest, Diddy... You crash hard. Do you, do you keep your armor on? <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Don't, uh, don't answer that question. It's fine. <laughs> I'll um, I'll um, I'll take it off. I normally do. Okay. All right. So you crash and you crash hard because you know, like I said, it's past midnight. By the time you get back with the rest of the uh, the group, there, you find a uh, a decent spot in the campsite somewhere. Not sure if it's yours or not, but it's big enough to accommodate you, so you take it. But. Uh, as soon as you, well, it seems like, as soon as you pass out, you start to have this vision. And you mentioned a few days ago that you were going to ask your god, you know, something about what's going on. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. All right. So, out of character, that's what's going on. All right. So, you, in a dreamlike state, you kind of sit up. And you're in the middle of a field, no grass, barren, none of your comrades are around you. But it's a strange mist just right beyond the, the edge of your dark vision. That's all you can see, it's just barren land and this mist all around you. And then rising up out of the mist and kind of walking towards you, you see this huge figure, robed, dark robe, heavy earthen type of uh, uh, material. And one huge bony hand kind of points out from underneath the robe and points up to the sky. You look. I'll look up. And you see this shape rise up out of the mist far off in the distance. The shape resembles uh, like an ever-changing mass of some kind of elemental carnage. I mean, you see fire, you see water, you see wind, you see rolling magma and earth. The creature then waves its other hand in the air, as if it's like drawing on a bowstring. Yep. This, this elemental mass in the distance grows to an astronomical size, but you can still tell that you're viewing it from what appears to be like several miles away. Along the surface of this huge elemental carnage mass. You see uh, these tiny humanoids on some kind of a earthen battlefield. Flashes of magic kind of ring out and you can barely hear the, fin the, the faint sound of ringing steel. But you still can't quite make out you know, what, what they are or who they are. Again, the creature waves his hand one more time, still pointing one finger towards this large mass. And now you see yourself standing on the battlefield itself. But the battle's over. Along the ground lie all kinds of dead and broken bodies. And you start to recognize some of them. Corn lies there, his head split open on a rock. He's lying motionless just a few feet away from you, his hands still buried in two balls of ice. Usul, his throat slit from ear to ear, eyes staring up at nothing. Sylvia, Dried blood caked on her cold, dead hand as they grasp what appears to only be her entrails splayed out before her. Silith, half of his face seems to be melted away by what can only be assumed to be acid or some such, but he's still clutching his symbol of Timora. Toman's eyes, I'm sorry, Toman's severed head lies on the ground, a look of utter shock still on his face. Twigs crumpled bodies protruding from underneath the large boulder with his eyes gouged out. Dr. P's body is impaled 
about four feet in the air on some kind of a steel rod. All around, there's more carnage. Some humanoid, others appear to be slotty, still others are still unrecognizable. But off in the distance, shrill shrieks can be heard. But you can't quite see or determine what the source is. The hooded creature then points to the sky. You look up and try to match its gaze, and you see several elongated creatures, almost eel-like, kind of peering down at you as they kind of hover up in the sky. The earth beneath you begins to rumble. and begins to crack and split underneath your foot. Footsteps can be heard approaching from all around you, but not the sounds of boots. These are the sounds of clawed feet. Thousands of beady eyes begin to glow in the dark reaches of your vision. As they get closer, you realize that the clawed feet belong to hundreds of charging slotty. You turn in time, about face, just in time, to see a giant slotty claw sink under your neck. And you can feel the claw digging into the back of your skull. Your body goes limp, but you still hear the sounds of the slotty shrieking with excitement, the victory. Your lifeless body is savagely slammed back down into the ground. Although you cannot move, you still seem to have your senses. You can see, you can smell, you can hear. You watch as all the slotty that were coming towards you all back up and form a perimeter about 100 feet from the battlefield. The earth below you erupts opens up to where a white to where a cylindrical chasm opens up underneath you. Chasm is deep and it changes with that same ever-changing elemental maelstrom you saw in the sky when you first started this adventure. You fall. After a moment your vision instantly fades to a bright white light to where nothing is visible. Then you hear a voice, a familiar voice, whispering to you. It has been foretold, but not yet written. Remain steadfast, my champion, or do not fail me. Your destiny must not end here. As you hear this, the white flashes go again, and you awake. As you look around, you realize you're sitting on some kind of a roof structure out in an open field somewhere. You can see the remnants of a campfire off to your left just a little bit. And you quickly realize you're sitting on top of the barn just outside of Mucklestones. Look up into the night sky. You can see what appears to be a ghostly swan kind of flying away and then it fades into nothing. There you go. Your patron told you something, maybe. Okay. I feel a little bit like Iron Man after the Avengers and go, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so I, I think I've got it. So um, I don't know if it means anything. So what had um, the broken body is we had. Uh, I just wanted to write down. We had pen wiped out just was. So, uh, Dr. P, how did, uh, so how did Dr. P die? We had dried blood on, uh, still, and oh, yeah. we, Let me repeat it to yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one Just second. in case it's, still... pull my notes back up here again, because no way I'm remember all that. Just like you're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was writing it, my pen blew, and I went, ah! Okay, so let's start at the top. Corn, his head was split yeah. open. Uh, yeah. Hands buried in balls of ice. Oh, uh, okay, so balls, not balls. I had put balls for some reason. Balls of ice, yep. <laughs> Corn lost his balls. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds I thought, oh, now I know what happened to him. Death yep. by balls. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Usul was slit from ear to ear. His throat, yep, yeah, I got that one. Okay, Sylvia, uh, yeah. she had blood caked on, on her on her head and hands, like her her guts had been spilled out in front of her. Yeah, I got that one, yeah. 
Okay, Silith. It's like half his face was kind of melted away from some kind of acid or something. Yeah, acid. Yeah. And Twig uh, was underneath a large boulder with his eyes gouged out. So Doc, most of it looks like slud, basically. He ate most people. Yeah, okay. And Dr. P? Uh, he was impaled on some kind of a mm -hmm. steel rod. Mm -hmm. And I think that's everybody. Yeah. And they sunk their claws into my head. Okay. So I know I was definitely sludificated. Okay, good. That's all I need. And then, um, so it was a large creature with bony arms. Did it look like death to me, or did it just look like some sort of weird elemental creature? Give me the one a... who was doing the point. Give me an Arcana check. Okay. Uh, not that good at the old Arcana, but I will try. Oh, minus one, even better. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Looks like a chicken. Oh, wait. You're not hundred percent sure. No! If that was supposed to be death, but at the end you recognize that voice as being your your deity, your goddess, whatever it is that has been leading you all these years. Okay, okay, no. Excellent. Ah, oh, yes. So the um the the yeah the lady gotcha, and then so we've seen the plane of chaos. We've seen limbo. We've seen the effects, um, and I saw. Did it look like the the really terrible slard mother guardian thing, that chaos ball thing, that horrible thing? Uh, the large ball of chaos. Yeah, or was that just limbo? The large ball of chaos is what the the figure kind of drew his hand back, like he's drawing a bow, and then that large yep. ball just grew astronomically, and that ended up being what you were standing on. Oh, okay, so I'm just being placed and seeing what Limbo's like. But I didn't actually get to see the Slard Guardian, the, the bad, bad boy. So okay, all all I explained to what you saw was like thousands of beady eyes. You saw a bunch of slotty running towards you, and you saw those weird eel-looking creatures that were floating in the sky as well. Do I have any idea what they might be? You can roll me a Arcana check, and you got to roll really high to know this. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm starting to think they're those limbo um, transport things, but I, see, that's what I'll take away from it, no matter what my role is. But yeah. okay, <laughs> you believe every one of you, but you're not really sure. Yeah, you'd never seen them a flying before. worm. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right, I'll uh, I'll wake up then. Um, oh, so I actually am on the barn, so I'll slowly get up, get off, and go back home and. Scratch my head, going. Whoa. It's right on. It's right on top of this barn right here, right next to the campsite where you guys were. Okay. And that's like about a twenty to thirty foot tall roof right there. That's a pretty big barn. Gotcha. Uh, then I'll carefully make my way back. I sleepwalk a lot. <laughs> And you woke basically it's just right at right at dawn when the sun was just starting yep. to kind of crest over the horizon. Yeah. And then I saw the swan. Right. And you know from past times you've had your goddess talk to you, she comes in different shapes and forms and mm -hmm. a gray, a gray swan is one of those things. Wow. Got to see her. Fantastic. All right. Um he's very, very uplifted. A bit uh, terrified about what he just saw, so he's going to come back to the guy. All right, guys, this is all you. you guys slowly start to kind of wake up in the morning. I don't know if Diddy was waking you guys up or not, but uh, I got to say, most of you wake up to the sound of the uh, the camp itself, kind of getting going, and some of Twig's uh, posse kind of starting to get breakfast going, and trying to be quiet, but. As they start getting busy. Oh, they're not being quiet. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, guys. What do you want to do? I'm going to scratch just... the wound on my chest and wonder if there's anything in there. 
Ah, uh, that's right. Tolman, you're back in the barracks. Tolman and Silith and Buttercup are all back in the barracks. So if you want, I can switch over the barracks and kind of role play what's going on with Tolman for the moment. What do you guys think? That's fine with me. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's switch back over to the uh, the barracks where you are, Tolman. All right. So. Doctor Peel kind of. So in the last session, I don't think you were here. So kind of give you a little brief recap of what happened to you. You and Silith and Buttercup all went into the infirmary over mm -hmm. here, and that's where you discovered the, the couple of the doctors that were um, taking a look at your wounds. But uh, they told you that they had seen, you know, this infestation back in Injast. And matter of fact, while you were there, uh, someone within the infirmary had one of those tadpoles erupt from them. And Buttercup is actually the one that caught it just outside. And they have that under, uh, uh, I guess, locked chest, I think is where we left it off last time. Mm -hmm. So you and Silith are both, Silith especially, is, is freaking out pretty bad uh, about this potential threat that you guys now have. But, I mean, the, the guys in the barracks are being you know, somewhat you know, friendly to you. I mean, they realize that you uh, were part of the uh, effort to thwart the invasion of the slot here recently. But uh, they have been under orders to kind of keep you under a lock uh, cell or or barracks, so to speak. Right. So if anything erupts, it's not going to get far. Right. Okay. Okay. Do, do I feel anything any different now that it's been a day later? Uh, it's been maybe about 12 hours since the, the oh, 12 fight. Hours. Okay. Roughly that. So go ahead and give me a uh, give me a nature check or a medicine, whichever. You would like. Uh, let's see. What is nature? Our medicine's a slightly better. Uh, you don't feel any different. I mean, your 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 wounds have kind of you know healed over the over the night. You feel a little bit more rested than you than you were yesterday, but uh, you can't notice. You don't seem to notice anything foreign okay. inside you. If that's what you're going for. Yeah. So I'm a little paranoid about that, obviously. For a little worried, but um, okay. Um, when the doctors or the healers are around, I'll ask them if they've come up with any way of trying to determine whether we are infected or infested. And okay, so as you have as, as you have that conversation with some of the barrack folk, they're going to tell you that gather. Yeah, the doctor said he'd be by sometime mid-morning. He had a couple other, uh, um, I guess, patients that were a little more dire need that he spent a long night last night working on them. But he said he'd be by mid-morning to kind of check on you and if we saw any change in you that we were supposed to notify him immediately. But you guys okay. seem to be fine. But Silith is going to be standing next to you going, does this look infected? He's like showing like one of, the, one of his scars that's kind of healed a little bit. Look infected? Does this look bad? What is this? Look at this. Come on, you gnomes. Just, just... Tell me, what's going on? He's just, he's like really freaking out at this point. And Buttercup is sitting in the corner just kind of licking on one spot uh, underneath her, her leg or her belly uh, over and over again. I'm going to try to talk Silith down a little bit and say, hey, you know, we're in this together. Just, we got to give them the time and to, to figure this out and they'll make us better. I, am, I have faith in that. And give that, you know, try, try to calm him down a little bit and get him to to breathe so go ahead and give me a persuasion check to see if you can calm him down uh, i gotta check his character sheet i don't think his insight's that high come on where is your sheet at Silith? Nah. Okay. You, you see him kind of breathing hard and looking around nervously at all the gnomes and the fact that he's in his locked room and he's got you and the, the bear in there with him. So I just, I just, I saw, you saw that thing, right? You saw that thing mm -hmm. that just ripped through. I don't want that. That, that That's not me. I tell you, I, that's not me. I don't want that to happen to me. But Neither do I, friend. Neither do I. Why don't we sit and play some cards and not try to think about that until the healers can do their job? We're not making it any better by worrying. And I'd much rather play some cards or 
Not to think about it right now. It just kind of looks around nervously. It's fine. That's fine. Yeah, just take my mind off of it. That's 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 good. That's good. So you need to pull out a deck of cards that are new, (laughs) aka (laughs) unmarked, and I'll play a real game. (laughs) I'll pick a game that he likes and uh, play it straight with him. Okay. And you'll you'll notice even last night that uh, Rufus came into the barracks with you. You just kind of right outside the. uh, uh, the door. I mean, the yeah. the barrack guys will let you bring the dog in if you want, but it's up to you. Yeah, no, I definitely would want him at next to me. So okay. he he just sleep, you know, at he'd be on the floor while I'm sitting up, but he he'd probably actually be on the bed with me while I'm sleeping. Okay. All right. So I'll settle for calm down a little bit and sit down and play some cards with you. I don't know if Buttercup and Rufus have any kind of interaction or anything. <laughs> it's- I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's something we've never even explored before. I mean, here's a day after Buttercup, Valentine's Day. <laughs> Buttercup comes over and like stares at his at their cards while they play. Just like watches the cards go back and forth. Very nice. All right. So with that, if you're gonna play cards, I want to. Anthony said he may be here tonight, so I want to switch over to the other group. If he does show up, then we'll get a chance to role-play with both you guys. If not, I'll come back and, and run through that with uh, with you guys without That's him. fine. Okay? All right. All right, so back out in the campsite. What are you guys doing? Well, Twig is already up and, and, and giving orders and instructions and having breakfast cooked and sampling breakfast and making as much noise as possible. Okay. What about the rest of you? Morning stretches. <laughs> uh, and a one and a two. <laughs> Did you come over and he sort of looks sad as he sees his friends, but then sort of puts on a smile and takes off his helmet and says, morning all. How are you going? Oh, good, good morning, Diddy. I had a very interesting um, adventure yesterday. Um, you guys were asleep. Uh, there wasn't any slug under the um, building. We did manage to reunite that missing um, the man who uh, owned the, the diamond shop. Uh, we reunited him with his wife. And really good thing is we've got quite a lot of diamonds in case anybody gets hurt um we might be able to do something about it but a quick question i know you guys like to hide things but i saw something that was disturbing i'd like to tell you about it but it, it's it's a bit disturbing it was a sort of a, a warning from my god i think it's something that could happen but it doesn't want it to happen did you see the end of the world? Uh, I saw the end of our world. I just Same difference. <laughs> I'll um, I'll say the sort of um, not wanting to happen. Uh, there was a bad... oh, oh, he'll he'll make sure everybody's okay. But don't tell. If not, not tell that person and ask. It's not the same difference, Dr. P. Other worlds didn't end, just ours. Make sure you get that straight in your notes. It was just also in the plane of chaos. If we go to a battle where it's an open fight, things could go bad. So um, it was a prophetic dream. But um, I'll ask everybody there, are you okay I tell you? I, I don't like keeping secrets. Quite, it's a bit dark. I mean, Watch out, really... they'll kick you out of muckle stones. I've been telling them the world's ending for years. <laughs> oh, well, we're outside of muckle stones, so I thought I'd tell you. See, we your secret safe with me. It's not a secret. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you because it relates to all of you. If, if you want, uh, does anyone say no? They don't want to hear. I don't live here, so it really don't matter to me. Okay, um. Well, last night, um, when Hello. I was asleep. Hello. 
That sounds like Diddy. Hi, it's Anthony. It is. Hi, Brian. How's it going? Awesome, buddy. So glad you could join us, bud. Straight up interrupted Diddy's story. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, that's a rabbit. This, this oh, is a good, this is a good uh, point to come in. Diddy's about to explain about his uh, his dream or his vision he just had last night. So let, let's let him do that, and then I'll, I'll kind of get you up to speed if uh, if you want, Anthony. On off, I think last time. So is it still in that zone or? In that no, zone. It's after that. You know, what I mean? you know what I mean? Is it still in the one off, or is it? Uh... No, it's it's the the morning after that. Okay. Oh, um, sorry. There was one thing I was supposed to level up. I didn't do that. Sorry. Okay. Well, you can work on that kind of on the side right, while he's doing this part if you want. But go ahead. Yeah. All right, Diddy. <laughs> so the first thing Diddy says is, how many of you had prophetic dreams about the way you'll die? Specifics? Yeah. Can't say that I have. I just know it's going to happen. <laughs> Sooner in your case, probably. Quick, uh, quick, quick. Am I late? Uh, yeah, you're a little late. We started like uh, 50 minutes ago. I thought you guys started at 10 o'clock Eastern. Uh, it's 9 o'clock Eastern. Oh, that's my fault then. Sorry. I Literally, I've been here. I just was like, oh, okay, I'll jump on 15 minutes before. And uh, that's my fault. Sorry. No Sorry worries, man. No worries. We got, uh, we got you set up for the next little session. We're good. All right, go ahead, I have the opposite ahead. problem. I come here two hours early. That so, uh, sounds like the opposite of the problem. What I, what I saw um, was uh, a representation of my deity. Um, and they pointed to the plane of chaos, so limbo. And in there, there was a battle. It looked like it was an open battle on a on a field. So first thing, probably a good idea, we go toe to toe with hundreds of sides. But this seems to be um, one of the possibilities that we've told not to. So here's the warning: uh, if we do go into it, I'll explain to them what happened. Um, if you're caught out, and but I'm making the assumption. Basically, uh, it doesn't say anything about being caught out. It was just we're on an open field fighting. Um, there was fighting, and then when I got to zoom in to where we all were, you were all dead, and um, was, I don't know if it has any significance, but um, I'll explain how they uh, were done. So I say, Quarren, you had your head split open with balls of ice on your hand. Um, Usul, your throat was slit. Silvana, uh, uh, Sylvia, blood caked, and your guts were cut out. Um, Scylla, acid on the face. Twig. A boulder and your eyes were gouged out. Um, it was uh, in, uh, Dr. P, you're impaled on a steel rod. I don't know what you did, special treatment. And I uh, and got hit with um, the slutty, <laughs> basically drove their nails into my neck and into my head. Um, so that was not nice. Um, and I saw flying creatures in the sky. I wonder if any of you know what they look like, eels? Um, and he was pointing into the sky about looking up, so possibly the creatures might be able to save us from this fate. Just a guess, but um, does anybody know anything that can transport you in limbo that looks like a huge eel? Well, first, it's a very important I ask this question. Sure. Uh, you didn't have any of the green ale from that tavern down the way, did you? No, no, I didn't. But afterwards, I was thinking maybe I should have. And I didn't have any of those uh, those shrooms stuff that Uzzel passed. But, but for later. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if any of these deaths... But I'm, I'm just thinking if we take to the open battlefield as hard, it probably end up well. Because I saw hundreds of buggers um, erupting around from all over the place. Was there multiple colors there? Um, yeah, uh, you would have saw the full gamut. It's like I explained before. You saw you know, blue, the red, the green, some grays. Yeah, you've seen everything. Yeah, it was a shit fight. So, um, yeah, look, I, I, I think getting direct assault in an open location is not a good idea. We've got to try and get it. So the only thing they pointed out was that. Um, and 
uh, the weirdness of Caitlin. So, and I suppose at about that time, um, you know, Diddy's card comes into his head and he goes, I do have something that might be able to help a little during the time if um, we get them near the crystal. But um, what, what I was told is that we have to, I can't fail, this is not the right outcome for us. Um, and that we need to, to so I thought I'd, um, was there anything else that I missed? Oh, I saw the swan. Um, well, towards the end, the, the earth opened up and swallowed you up, basically. I don't yeah. know if you want to share that or not. Yeah, the earth, yeah, the earth swallowed me up. Um, there was a hole, a cylindrical hole, and down I went. That could be about. Um, uh, and so basically, it was a warning from the god don't get into this situation where you're going toe to toe. Is that how it felt? Well, well thank you for sharing. Last night I had a dream where I thought I was using the chamber pot in my dream, and it turns out I just did it right in my sleeping bag. <laughs> Let Cedric know that. He'll need to clean that one. Uh, right away. <laughs> Gets into the feathers. Um, was there anything else that I missed? Um, uh, I think you got it. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of elemental force play in Limbo. So um, core extractor, drill gem. The only thing I don't understand is heck, we're going to get near that, even the soft underbelly of the gem without getting the creatures at all. I also learned a little bit about each of the different types of slot part. It helps you out. I'm not sure if I share with you that the the actual battlefield itself was almost like a a charred uh, wasteland, like everything there had been burnt to a crisp. Oh, okay. I'll tell them. Um, so yeah, it, it looked like it was a well burnt up. You know, we basically copped it hard. But I didn't get to see the immense guardians there. And the, have you heard of the? The guardians that were placed there by the person who made the stone. Yeah, I can't remember if Brevin a... shared that with you guys uh, the night before or not. Did he talk about that at all? Or is that uh, just with Diddy? He told... Yeah, he just told me. Well, so, what we know. Um, you're afraid of getting infected, I expect. If, it, if it's a disease, I might be able to help. So, you know, if those tadpoles get it, it should be all right. But look, it's probably only the green ones and the... Uh, sorry, the blue ones, the red ones, and maybe green ones that did that. Was that all you guys were fighting? I mean, Usul, you would know that there was no green uh, slotty as part of the, the bodies that you guys all went through. They were all red and blue. Okay, I'll let them know that then. Okay, so they're the guys that are going to give you the... So they sound like the group. They're the ones that are going to give you that infection. Um, I don't know if my skills will stop it, um, but it's possible that I can kill those worms before they get into you um, by touching you. The other thing is that there's another sort, a grey sort, a, a dark colour. Um, that's the leader type of them all. Um, and then in the between, there's a green one who's the spell card. I don't know if that one will give you disease. Possibly, possibly. Um, how did I attack you guys? Was it, did you get clawed? Did you get bitten? Did they sting you? I'll ask them because they had the battle, so. Well, Corrin will pipe in and saying that uh, uh, for the ones that are here with you, most of them feel like uh, you know they, I guess, fought or were struck by them. But he'll share that Silith and Toman and maybe even Buttercup could have been infected by them somehow, but they're not really sure. They left them back at the uh, the infirmary in the barracks last night. Well, 
Well, I'm gonna, I've got a special touch that hopefully will drive out the, the critters. I don't know. But listen, if, if you can recall, was anyone just either clawed or bit that did have um, a worm in them that popped out? Um. So I don't, I don't, the last time I played, I do remember the last thing we ended on was Scylla screaming, get it out of me, get it out of me, and like clawing at his skin. Right. Yeah. I'll come back to you in a second. As soon as Diddy gets done with this conversation with the group over here, I'll come back over oh, to you. Oh, am I not with, am I not with them? No, you're over here. Let me see where I'm pinging or not. You're over here in the, uh, uh, the oh, barracks. Oh, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta scroll out. Hold on. I can't see everything. That's why. Here, I'll ping again. You're over here near the infirmary in the barracks. You're actually in the barracks right now with Tomba okay, and I Buttercup. Okay. I see Diddy over there. In the, okay. Yeah. I had to scroll up. You see where I'm pinging now? Yeah, no, I got it, I got it. Yeah. Okay. So possibly the leader types don't infect you, just the just the front line. Um, it probably would be a bite, maybe, um, uh, where they transfer the worm into you. Um, they could claw, but that's, that'd be weird, possibly. Um, but it'd be good to you know, try and avoid that. Um, they have a... There's, there's two guardians. Uh, the two slard factions, and there are factions. Hopefully we can get them to beat the shit out of each other, but um, they have a mother type, a ruler, a big, big slard. Um, and then above all of that, there's the guardian, um, who's the thing that is protector of the gem. Um, do any of you guys know who created the gem in the first place? I mean, from your own knowledge? I don't think anybody in your group right now is going to have, they'd have to roll yeah, really, yeah. really high to understand that one. I would I would assume it would be super powerful, but not terribly um, au fait on things that are a fantastic idea. But we'll leave that for later. Um, <laughs> I need to criticize the gods, but at the end of the day, who would make such a thing, right? Um, it's, it's chaos. It just creates these beasties and so um, now there's a, a massive gun, an absolute um, that's to protect the gem. So apparently it's supposed to be there and do its job of creating chaos and one day destroying the world. But um, that's that's there. So if you can get a signature off it and find out who it is that did it in the first place, you can have a chat to them. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's just one of those. But I would think... The mother types um, and the slards, there's factions. If we can somehow look like a slard or use those gems that they've got to appear like a slard, get them to fight amongst each other, that's a hell of a lot better than going toe to toe with them. Um, all, I, all I can think about is that somehow the, the gems that you found inside of their heads, was it? I was just wondering for you guys that imagine possible that that link us to them because the gem and the big gem might be linked so the the uh, the spawning stone and that gem might well be linked um, and the big Yankee might know the I'm not terribly I don't know tons more was there anything else that I picked from the conversation about the slide? with um, Jordell and Brevin? I think you probably covered most of it. The fact that uh, Brevin said that he's got a contact uh, in limbo and they're going to try to use him to help them uh, get to the spawning song because that's how his great-grandfather did it. But uh, that was going to be okay. talked about in more depth this morning when you guys went back to meet him. So maybe if any of you knew some questions or something that's in the back of your head, I think Possibly we can use a spawning stone. These things are like, you know, they're little stones. Maybe we can call them baby spawning stones. From them to get close to the gem and somehow look the, the, the thing is that we would have to look like them. But no big front end, hi, oh, this is us, let's get into a fight. And if we can look like the other faction and cause problems for the other faction, they might just be too busy. He laying into each other. And 
and um, it's always thinnest, the crust, um, on the gem. Uh, while they're, they're spawning, you get the best attachment to the stone. But we'll talk about that this morning. But I was just wondering if you guys had had any dreams, any portents, heard anything else? You know, so we've got something else to add to the table, but some um, what I know about why. Oh, of course, and they can change shape. But are any of you guys worried that you might be affected? Were any of you either bitten or clawed? We have some over in the infirmary that might be infected, including Buttercup. That gets the worm out. Um, if they've got it, of course, we'd have to know they actually tried to. None of you guys bit, got bit or clawed? Well, Quarren will surely. He, he definitely took a few blows. I don't know if oh. not everybody else, but... All right, buddy. <laughs> stand still. Say, ah, this might hurt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell everybody to stand around him. Um, as soon as... If it does come out, we're going to chuck it in the bag of holding. Uh, this is a... Uh, my thoughts are it's a different dimension and, and these things can't live well in our world but inside of the bag of holding probably maybe last a little bit longer so all you need to do is um scoop it up chuck it in and uh we just remember it's in there all right uh i'll tell them all to get their weapons out and then they wanted to beat the shit out of this thing corn's <laughs> <laughs> like whoa whoa what are you getting ready to do diddy what are you doing oh, i'm gonna Cast a spell that will cure uh, the disease that might cause, you know, it might make it unsavory for the creature to be inside of you and it'll come out. My God. Okay. It, it will, it will hurt. It will hurt. I would. Most I things worth it. doing hurt. Yeah. I'll say I don't, it won't hopefully kill you. It won't be full grown. It'll be little and it'll hopefully come out the way that it Corn's like, whatever. That's fine. He holds his arms out for someone who wants to hold on to him. Yeah. I'll, I'll say, well, you, you could actually be ready to fight. <laughs> just put the hell out of it. Whatever you do, grab it. Don't kill it. Chuck it in the bag. Okay? We just want to keep a live one. Okay. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Steady? I'll just wait for everyone and then I will touch him and do the five points of that yeah. I need to keep. So before he does that, everybody else that's here, kind of explain to me what you're doing and how you're doing it to help Diddy here. Uh, Twig gets an axe out and calls for his four guards to come over and help. Okay. What about you, Azul? Uh, go ahead and... Uh... I guess get my bow out in support. Okay, so you're keeping your distance, but you're ready to shoot ready something to shoot if you see it? Yeah, yep, yep. Okay, and Dr. I'll P? I'll do the same. Okay. Dr. P will do the same. Okay, so Dr. P and Usu are keeping their distance. Twig and his four guards, I kind of got him surrounded. And I'll I'll say Sylvia's doing the same thing. She's kind of keeping her distance, but she's reading a, you know, a firebolt or something like that if something comes out of corn. <laughs> I'll say to them, Ready right. fire spells in this party have a bad history together. <laughs> I'll say try. Just and pointing that out. Look, we, we're going to try and knock this thing out. We don't want to kill you, but look, if it's going to try and hurt you, please. Got it. Kill, kill corn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll say this. No, I saw that in the lim in limbo, so this is okay. <laughs> <I'll touch it. laughs> I lose five points if he. Oh, if he's diseased. Okay, so you're casting it. Yeah, sure. If he's been hit, I need to get to. Okay, so I didn't hear anybody say they're holding corn down. So he's just standing there taking it. Kind of got somewhat yeah. of a, a solemn look on his face as you place your hands upon him, and his eyes get bright and he kind of shakes a little bit, and he's like, ah, ah, ah. "Just kidding. I don't feel anything." That's right. but thanks, Diddy. He looks around at the rest of you guys with your your bow and arrows already. So, you guys really going to shoot me? Not it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anyone else cop it? I have an axe, not a bow. <laughs> I'll 
I'll just go down the line. So, Sylvia, did you get, did you get bitten or clawed? Uh, I see her hit points are down, so she must have got hit by something, but I don't think it was a slotty. I think she may have got hit by a by a null arrow or something like that. Oh, okay. I'll just see. If no one else has been hit, okay, we're good. I don't twig. Did you ever get hit by a slotty? I can't remember if you did or not. I don't remember being hit by a slotty. I know one of the gnolls shot him. Okay, but I don't remember getting hit by a slotty. Buttercup did though. Right. But not. Oh. I don't know if Professor P was or not. I thought like the Minotaur guy like trampled the hell out of me, but I don't recall. There was a blue slotty next to me though, so I could have taken. Some okay. So, did you going to burn some more points on uh, Dr. P then? Yeah, I'll say, okay, Dr. P, did you, um, what would be really helpful, did you get bit or flawed? I, I know nothing bit me. It's a possible clue. Okay. Well, look, Why I would know. something bite you? You stink as it is. No, shut up. It, it, <laughs> I'm, I'm a delicious morsel. Just a little chewy. More like a raisin. <laughs> I will. Use the five point. I'll do the same thing. I've got the bag of holding open, ready to zip it up and chuck it in. And then I'll do the same thing. There you go. Five points. If I'm diseased. Ready? So, Dr. P, how do you react? Will this cure this small bunion I have? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we'll leave that to the guy. <laughs> I'll touch him. A little higher. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We've rubbed the ointment. <laughs> uh, does anything happen to him? So, Dr. P, you know what I know. So, how do you react to this? <laughs> Maybe I don't know what you know. <laughs> <laughs> All these words fly out of me. But they, okay. Wow, you really did get a number of. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me whisper something to you then. Is it Doctor P or is it Professor P? Which is it? I always get confused. Professor. Yeah, that's right. How's that, Rand? That's perfect. Bunyan is gone. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. You seem to also be fine. All right, take me to your um, to your bed. Where are you gonna go next? Um. Well, I'm, I'm just I'm just going what through. Go? We know who got hurt. So and actually hurt by either of the blue or red. I think. Okay. Right. So before you go over to the infirmary or the barracks where the guys are, I want to go back over to Silith and Toman. And role play their little uh, scenario here. Okay? Anybody else over on the regular party with Diddy? Have anything else they want to role play or ask or do? Okay, I'll take as a no. All right, so back over at the barracks. Let me get mm -hmm. uh, Silith kind of up to speed of what's what's happened here, if you haven't read the, uh, the updates. So basically... Not, sorry. Okay, that's fine. I, I totally get that, man. Don't worry about it. So basically, uh, during the battle... Um, you especially uh, are freaking are freaking out. You're paranoid that something is infested in you. Um, you felt one of the strikes kind of hit you, and then something almost like pulsed as his claw hit you. So you've been freaking out this whole time, and and Quorum would have shared the story about how someone else he knew was infested by these things. And also, while you guys were all at the infirmary, there was another refugee there that was on a basically a waiting table, operating table, where one of these things basically burst out of her gut, killed her, took off outside, Buttercup caught it, and they now have it kind of trapped in a, in a chest right now. So you've been freaking out pretty bad, thinking that you are infested, but the doctor said there's there was no way to tell. He said they were unsure about the gestation period, how long it takes for these things to fully form. He said it could be three months, it could be... You know, three hours, he, he has no way of, of knowing until they get large enough for someone to, you know, just notice that they're in them. So, that's why they put you, Toman, and Buttercup 
all in the barracks uh, under lock uh, for obvious reasons for in case you guys are infested these things pop out of you they want to be able to contain it uh, but the the officers in the barracks have been trying to keep you guys comfortable because they know that you guys were um, inspirational and in basically defeating the invasion that the Slotty and the Centaur and the Nullis tried to do just the, the night before. So currently, uh, Toman has kind of calmed you down a little bit, Silith, and you guys are uh, sitting there playing cards as you're waiting for the, the doctor to uh, make his round over to you guys again uh, sometime mid-morning. Okay. Any questions about what's going on from you, Silith? Uh, no, we're basically we're chilling there. Um, quick question. What is a percentile die? Is that a D100 or is that a D10? Uh, should be a D100. Oh, jeez. Okay. All right. So uh, basically we're trying to stay there and not uh, not freak out. Yeah. And Tolman, he did a persuasion check to kind of calm you down. I rolled for you and you rolled a four. So really he's kind of got you calmed down a little bit. But you are still you know, on the inside kind of just you know freaking out a little bit. But he's got you at least on the outside, calm down and not freaking out as much as you were before. Okay? All right, all right. Looks like I rolled a four. What did I roll? Hmm? Perception? No, for insight. Oh, insight. That's what I was like. Yep. I rolled it. All right. So any role-playing wants to happen between you two while you're playing cards, or do you me move on to what I was, thought was going to happen next? Uh, Tolman, you? I'm just playing cards, you know, we really haven't had a lot of chance so, to talk in the past. So. Playing cards, talking about good ways to earn money, constantly yeah. scratching at this hole in my skin that feels like it might be infested. <laughs> yeah. And absent, you know, I'm doing the same thing absent. <laughs> just kind of rubbing it and everyone's not just reaching over and petting Rufus and just trying to keep my mind off of it. <laughs> just kind of stare at that spot on Tome as we play cards to see if it like <laughs> pulses or moves. <laughs> so it's like when someone has a big zit on their face, you don't want to look at it, but you just look at it the whole time. Keep looking right. at it, right. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, an important thing to make sure you bring up is while you guys are in the infirmary, um, the doctor did try to um, look at some of the wounds, except before, I think all of you uh, had some kind of healing casted on you before you got over here. So he was unable to really find any open wounds i mean there was one particular spot on buttercup that she seems to keep licking over and over again he looked at it but he couldn't find it had been completely healed over so he was unable to really you know like stick his finger in the hole to see if he could find anything basically right. so that's why he has you guys in here for right now okay 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 anything else between you two no just trying to keep it light okay keep it light I'm, I'm going to cheat him out of all his, all his money. The playing cards. Per periodically, Buttercup like swats at their cards in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> Is that every play. time she sees me, thinks I'm cheating? <laughs> uh, no, just just periodically, just randomly. And she, and she does it to both of you. <laughs> Wait, is, is Buttercup not playing with us? <laughs> Buttercup's a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any threes? Or... <laughs> <laughs> First time you tell about to go fish, it goes out to the river. <laughs> I would like to see the guard try to stop this bear leaving too. <laughs> All right, so this goes on for you know a good thirty minutes or so, and uh, mm -hmm. you guys hear a little bit of commotion. Uh, you got like a one like a little window in your barracks. It's 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 barred, but you can see out of it, and you guys can hear outside that some guards are are meeting someone at the entrance and. A little bit of conversation going back and forth, but, you know, like, we need to see him. He's, he's, uh, he's an important part of the family, you know. And, Silith, you recognize the uh, the voice. <laughs> to uh, I don't remember his name. John Path. I'm sorry. It's this gentleman right here walking mm -hmm. up to you. My and, future daddy? That's right. So he walks up, and and uh, the guards kind of, you know, back and forth with him a little bit. Says, okay, fine. You can, you can talk to him, but you can't go in the room. So they let him all in and Joan Path, you can see the top of his head from the window and you hear the footsteps going on. There's also another little female gnome walking behind him. Got big old bright white hair. She's real pale. She's got real real red lips though. I'm not not like makeup lips. It's like it's naturally red for some reason. 
And uh, you hear the footsteps coming over to you, and you hear like a stool or something being pushed over by the window. And then you see that Joan Pass, head stick up right through the window. To Silif! Silif, are you okay? They told me that you, uh, you might be, uh, well, you know, have one of those thingies in you. Is that true? So scratch at his arms. He was like, yeah, I, I might have like the, the the frog, frog aids or something. Frog aids. <laughs> uh, must, that must be some kind of dragonborn thing. I don't know what that is. I mean, you can hear someone in the background. Like, let me see him. Let me see him. My God, Dad. Come on. At least I got to see the guy. And he's like, all right, all right, well, so if I, I came here for well several reasons. One to check on you, make sure you're okay, and and and. I, I, I'm sorry to, have to tell you this, but if something does happen to you, all those things, you know, that I gave you, they go back to me. That's just that's the way the law is here. But anyway, anyway, the other part, it says, I want you to, I want you to meet Sione. She's here, and she's very eager to see you. Yeah, whatever, Dad. I need... You ever see a dragonborn turns, like, pale? <laughs> <laughs> you say that loud? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> For Toman's edification, he's going to see me just kind of pale up. <laughs> And before Joan Path goes down, he kind of looks over at Tolman and says, says uh, Good day, sir. Appreciate your help. He doesn't even wait for your answer. He just gets down off the stool. And then you see this little face kind of walk up there and, st and stick her head in the window. It's like, ah, you must be Silith, right? All right. So uh, out, out of character, just because the way you described her, I was like, is that, is that the way a gnome normally looks? <laughs> That's the way this gnome looks. It's, it's kind of hard for me to make out the way you described her. I was like, wait, she sounds more like a vampire than a gnome. <laughs> No, she's just pale, and she's got naturally okay, red lips, and she's got big white hair. Emo. And big white what? Hair. Oh, like, okay, okay. The, the way you described it, I was like, is this, this is a gnome or is this a vampire? <laughs> no, right. she's a gnome. Right. It's, it's Joan okay. Pat's daughter. Okay. But it's no no Jean. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> so she pops her head in there and says, oh, I, uh, father tells me that we are betrothed. As much as I don't want to hear about that, but uh, it also says you may die. Is that true? Uh, so it's gonna roll for <sighs> and be like, no, I'll probably be, I'll probably be fine. Just uh, some rest and you know the good care of my friends and uh, rest. Yeah, I need rest. I, I probably should just sleep now. You see, she kind of sighs a little bit and rolls her eyes, looks back at her, uh, towards her dad, and whispers something under her Can breath. I hear it? Uh, give me a perception check. These are gnome-sized windows, right, right, Brian? Gnome height? Yes. Well, not oh, gnome height. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. So so while this is going on, Buttercup just, like, walks over and sticks her head out the window and starts licking. Oh, there's the bars gnome. still there. There's still bars there. She can't, like, well, stick her head out. Well, she's trying to lick her through the, through the window. Uh, she immediately kind of takes a step back and, you know, like, get, 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 get away from me. Get, just, get, quit it. Just stop it. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. And throws up her hand, but... So look, did you I get what she said? Uh, as she whispered in her breath, she's like, I wish she'd just freaking die already. She said that under her breath. And she kind of storms off, and you can hear her yelling at her father. Said, this is so stupid, Dad. It's so stupid. He's, he's a freaking dragonborn. He, I don't care if he is rich. This is stupid. I'm not going to marry him. And she kind of storms off while he's arguing after her and chasing after her. Oh, well, but Silla, if you heard that, just don't worry about it. I'll take care of it, son. And he kind of walks out the door, <laughs> following his daughter. So it's gonna, from his like pretending to fall asleep, is just gonna pop up and be like, in his head, he's just gonna be like thinking, like, wait, you can't make someone marry if they're not willing, and if she's not willing, I don't have to return anything. That's them backing out. <laughs> that uh, he now has, he's no longer pale. He's got a cheery smile. He's all jumped up. <laughs> you saying all that loud? Or you just think it in your head. I was just thinking it. <laughs> okay. Buttercup right. starts licking Silith. <laughs> Silith's just like just pushing her away. He like a hand on side of her face, just kind of trying to push her away. <laughs> he still got his cards in his hand too, so they got all. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so they're making their way down the street, and if the rest of you guys are making your way to the infirmary, you guys will pass each other uh, as you're making your way over there. Are the rest of you guys all heading to the infirmary as well to kind of follow up with them, or are you going to meet with uh, Brevin and Joe Dell? I'll, 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 I'll,
infirmary for me. Okay, if anybody's moving to the infirmary, go and place yourself over here. If you'd rather go to the uh, the keep meet with Joe Dell and Brevin, place yourself over here. <laughs> Just keep moving yourself on top of each other. I like that. <laughs> Dude, he's going to walk in. He says, okay, good news and bad news. Good news is I've got pills that will save your life. <laughs> bad news, you need to take one every day of your life, and I've only got one. <laughs> All right, Usul, you were heading to the infirmary as well? Yep, yep. Okay. And Dr. P, are you going someplace other than the keep? A tasty brew always gets me in the mood in the morning. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, so I'll quickly go to Dr. P. So you walk up to the uh, the Tinkering Tanker. This is like, you know, just after, it's the early morning. I'd say it's probably like, like 7 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, something like that. And you walk up to the tavern and you see it's, you're like, oh, yeah, it's it's closed. They don't open until later. I knock on the door now. My usual. Uh, how long are you going to continue knocking? <laughs> just... I'm just imagining this as an honorable man just sit there knocking and knocking and keep yelling, come on, come on, I know you're in there! <laughs> Is that you or are you doing something else? <laughs> that's, that's fine. He's, he's hanging out right there, outside there. What time does this fine establishment open? Does he? Uh, more like about mid-morning. They're not really a, a breakfast place. The breakfast place is more like the cup and candle up here near the hotel and the, and the goodly goose. Uh, the place you're at is more of just a, a watering hole in a bar. Oh, I got my AMs and PMs mixed up again, <laughs> baby. <laughs> All right, so you're going to get yourself some breakfast there is what I'm hearing, right? Yes. Okay, and if you're going to the cup and candle, that's more of a the, uh, the common folk type of uh, pay there at Goodly Goose is, as you know, is the pricey place. But, yeah, you'll you'll meet some of the, the waitress there that you're familiar with, and they'll find you a seat and, and, and get you a, a nice meal started. Baymax will have to wait outside, though. That's, the, you know, that's the that's the norm here. Yep. Okay. All right, so the rest of you guys are making your way over to the infirmary. Um, you guys say anything to Joan Paff and Sione as you're walking by? Oh. Hello. I don't think any, none of you guys will know Sione because she wasn't with you, but most of you guys, well, all you guys will know uh, Joan Path because, well, actually, Diddy be the only one that know Joan Path. Hmm. So, Diddy, would you I'll say anything you. to him? Yeah, I'll say, who's that fine young lady at your side? He kind of looks at you, and he looks at Sione a little bit, and Sione kind of looks back at you and kind of gives her that alluring look with her eyes. She said, Dad, that'd be a much better choice than that frickin' dragonborn. She says under her breath. Ah, oh, yeah, oh, Diddy, Diddy! I, uh, Diddy, this is my... I know about you, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. Diddy's like, oh! Or, or Joan Pass like, oh, this is my daughter, Sione! Diddy! Diddy! Meet Sione! Sione! Yes. Meet Diddy! I'll shake your hand. And she, she's a little gnome girl, so she's got to kind of reach her hand up pretty high, but she holds mm. her hand up for you to kiss it. Yeah, I'll kneel down and do that. Okay. Wow, a lot more strapping than that, uh, that little wiry little lizard thing you, you tried to set me up with, Father. I just, just, just calm down, girl. Like, that's just, it's for the good of you. Better than that, that no good, naughty, just don't you talk about naughty, Dad. Don't you talk about naughty. He's been a good guy to me. He's been a good man. Look at this. And she holds out a, a hand with all the rings on it. And look at this. And she shows some of her necklaces and stuff. He's been good, right? Ryan. Yeah? Just out of character. Are you trying to sell me used goods? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I'm not you selling know you anything. exactly what I mean. <laughs> I'm not selling you anything. <laughs> I'm going to put that in my religious tick box, too. I'm very religious. <laughs> man of the cloth. Yeah. You don't know about any of this. Still, so this is oh, all. No. <laughs> That's why I said it's out of character. <laughs> <laughs> so, she greets you well enough, did he? I mean, she's kind of looking yeah. you up and down a little bit, and... Yeah, just just let me uh let me know if there's something I can do for you, big guy. Okay, no problem. I'll, I'll say, well, Silith is a very nice. He's a very nice um, 
he's a very nice man. Um, but if you're man. already in love, he's not a man. Well, he's a, he's a very nice. Dr- what are you blind? She, 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 oh. kind of, she kind of squints at your eyes a little bit. Oh, there's something messed up with your eyes. You can see him, right? Uh, yes, yes. No, I know he's a dragon, but a nice creature. Very compassionate. Okay, whatever. But if you love somebody else, you should tell your father. Who, who say anything about love? I'm not in this oh. for love. Right, father? Just, I'm just, I'm Sione, just calm down. Just... Uh, no, I, I, I'll say to Sione, no, I meant naughty. If you love him. What? What are you saying? I don't... Don't you... I don't get this man, Dad. And she starts oh, walking off. <laughs> okay. I'll just sort of look at him and sort of, you know, give him that I'm <laughs> your daughter. <laughs> and I'll just toddle this way. Yeah, John Beth kind of puts one hand up against his brow and kind of rubs it back have and forth day. and sighs. Says, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pray you never have daughters. And he walks <laughs> off behind her. All right. So you guys make your way up to infirmary. Right about the same time that you see the, uh, um, I don't know how many of you guys were there yesterday or not, but the same elf healer kind of comes walking out in the infirmary over towards the barracks as well. And uh, he greets you guys uh, kindly enough, but doesn't really do chit-chat, just you guys both making your way over towards the barracks. You'd what say kind of name. elf is he? What kind of elf? Yeah. Uh, I'm not, I said I had your own perception, but you're good enough about it. He's a wood elf. I'll try to engage him in conversation. My God. Usul it is, right? Yes. Yes, it is. How are you today? I've, I've, I've been better. It's been a pretty crazy past 12 hours, as you can imagine. Just on my way over here to check on your, your friends to see if there's any uh, change in their... Uh, uh, change in their mood? Change in their bodily functions? Something like that? Do you think any... Do you think any of them will live? Uh, could you? Are you like yelling this out in the street, <laughs> right in front of the doorway? <laughs> he looks he really must. bad. <laughs> no, this is con- uh, conspiratorial. Okay, it's like uh, just, just I, I don't like to promise anything, good or bad. All I can do is I can monitor them and do my best. Let's, let's try to. Tone it down on the doomsday talk, if you don't mind. But I, I, I will do my best. That's all I can promise. Has anybody tried locate creature on them? Uh, yes, we tried that once before back in uh, in Jast. Uh, if but the thing was, they had to be familiar with it. Have you seen one of these things before? I believe we have one in a jar. Right, right, but it's they. From what I can tell, and again, this is very limited experience experience on this thing, they they change in form and size from I'm assuming something minuscule to something you know much larger. So I we tried locate creature before, but we've been successful at it, but it's still when the thing is relatively large. And by that point the host already knows that there's something in them. If you want to try it again, I, I'm not going to say no. Well, we should probably try it. Although, maybe not on that snake-looking one. He's kind of... Hmm. Ah, I, if, if, it's your magic. It's whatever you want, but uh, I'm a equal opportunity healer. I'll, I'll heal anybody for the right, uh, for the right reasons, obviously. But, uh, yeah, if you, want to, yeah, if you want to use some of your powers to help us, then by all means, I'll take it. All right. Do you yeah, want to come in for this, or do you want to wait? I'll, I'll bring him in. I'll say he says, do you... you say what? I missed that, did he? Uh, 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 so Diddy will bring them in, uh, uh, sort of wave and say, yes, no, bring him in. Um, but tell him to stay a little bit away. But that's a brilliant idea. Um, also, to um, locate creature. That's that's what I was planning. As soon as I get hold of one, I can, uh, do the same thing. So uh, I wonder if they change depending on the race they've entered. That would be cool. Um, so let's go in and um, 
and uh, talk to our friend. I'll I'll speak to the guard and, and I'll say to the um, to the elf, would you be able to give us permission to go inside to treat our friend and the bear? Huzel's our friend. Are you talking to the healer guy? Yeah, so whoever's standing guard, I'll say, um, uh, we'd like to go inside. There's a good, good chance we'll be able to cure them. Yeah, the guys on the barracks all you know recognize you guys as like local heroes and stuff. So there's not going to take much persuasion to talk them into letting you get by and everything. And even the the, the healer guy, after talking to you guys about what you're trying to do, it's like I'll, again, I'll take whatever help you can. And if you guys want to be in there with me when we do this, that's fine. But first things first. First, we just got to verify that they really are in, infested. But is that what you want to use your Location magic for? He says that to us all. Yeah, if we can determine if they're infected at all, maybe we can just, you know, burn them. Burn? That way they don't infect <laughs> anyone else. <laughs> you see that a look of shock on his face. He's like, what? What? No! We are not going to burn your friends! That's not how we do this! I've got a slightly less invasive way. Let's try that. Um, I might be able to get the creature to reject out of the, the creature the same way it went in, same way it comes out. Um, and then we then will have that creature. Where's the other one? Have you guys actually got one in a, in a box somewhere, did you say? They uh, had a couple of dead ones, the, the elf will tell you, that uh, I think Twig and his, uh, his posse kind of rounded up a couple of the bodies and they're in another locked room there in the barracks. And Oh, look, a dead one's perfect. Can yep. you bring me one? I, uh, dead one's actually preferable. Um, I just want to, I just need to handle it so I can do the locate creature. They okay. look like, good, good, good. Okay, so once I've handled one, I put it back in the box and I go, hey, Scylla, how are you feeling? Scylla, so oh, am I on? Yeah, okay, okay sorry. Scylla so just be like scratch at himself being like, man, I don't know, man. I think they're in me. I think they're in me. He's going to look like a meth addict, really. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> the best impression I can give, he's just scratching like he's jiving for meth and just... <laughs> Diddy says funnily enough, well, let's hope so. Um, sh sit down here. Now, were you clawed or bitten? Uh, both? Both. So it's like, yeah, both. <laughs> All right. Just tell me where you were clawed and then tell me where you were bitten. I'm going to do this to see which way it pops out. So still going to ask for a doll to point at? Okay, yeah, yeah, gotcha. All right. Um, uh, I say, okay, well, assuming he's been, say, like, bitten in the, on the face or neck or a, and a claw somewhere else, I'm just going, right, 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 right. It was, it was, um, it was, so his point out is he's got across the chest and yep. uh, and I think it was his left arm? I don't remember. I think it was his left arm. Okay. All right, so you were bitten and clawed, so we're not going to get that much perfect knowledge. Tom, uh, Tom, and were you bitten or clawed? Rich, did we lose you? Sorry, my mute button was... Uh, <laughs> I did the same thing. <laughs> I got clawed across the chest. All right. So this is going to... We'll do you first because I don't think it's through the claw. My, it makes sense it's the bite, but if it is the claw, then we know it's the claw. This is really cool. So you sit there. <laughs> and this might hurt. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I call Rufus over and he puts his big head in my lap and I'm petting him looking rather nervous. I'll say, yeah. oh, best let Rufus away because if the creature jumps out, it'll go straight for the next host. Oh, and oh, I want okay. that. I want that to be me because I have some resistance to disease. So, yeah, pull everyone away. All right, guys, you ready to beat the living knot out of this thing? Remember, <laughs> knock it out to kill it. Okay. And I'll... I'll lay the I'll lay the bag of holding open right near. Um, buddy, if it just pops out and you can just kick it in the bag, okay? Kick it, yeah, <laughs> that bag. <laughs> right. Give me a dagger. <laughs> <laughs> I'll <no>. just. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait for everyone to get ready to beat it. I'll pull you know life forms away so they're not going to get infected if it jumps out, and then I'll say, "You ready?" I'm ready and to attack. I'll... Yes. <laughs> Okay, um, I'll wait till everyone's ready, and then I'll just touch him and cure disease on him. You're casting cure disease, correct? Yeah, the 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 touch that uh, a paladin gives. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, Tom, when you feel this wash of warm energy kind of wash over your entire body, and you feel rejuvenated, you feel even more rested than you were before. <sighs> Then 
And then what? Oh, I was saying. <laughs> feel that? Do you feel that um, anything's coming wow, out? Oh no, I feel like I'm ready to go. That that felt great. Okay. But, uh, All right. So maybe you're okay. okay. All right. I have to burn one of my more powerful spells. I've got the worm in my hand. I've got a good idea what it's like. Well, you have one. Um, I'll hand? pass it over. Oh, we had the worm in our hand. You know the what the the dead one, and I'll. Give it over to Uso. There wasn't a dead worm. There was a dead slotty that they brought over to the barracks. Oh, have we got a worm in a in a chest we were talking about? Yes. Uh, I need to see it. Back over at the infirmary. Oh, well, all right. So we're, uh, we'll get the that to come over. Have a look at it if it's in the if it's in the box. Um, so as you start and... asking about the worm, the uh, the yep. elf Jindu, says, oh, but that's, it's, it was, it was in the infirmary last night and, we were trying to transfer it to another box, and one thing led to another, and yeah, it, it's 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 dead. It it tried. Oh, that's to... okay. Give it to give it to me, dead. That's okay. I just need to know what. I just need to handle it. You want to handle it? It's actually it's preferable that it is dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I just so we know what it what it is. I need to be familiar with it, as does um, Usul. Pass that over to him as well, and uh, I'll say, Usul, do you want to? Do you want to do the uh, the spell to see if he's if it's still in there after I cure the disease? Because then we know it, that my type of cure disease, which is more holy, doesn't work either. So, I'll do. sorry, I just not read the text message that Rand put in the text. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so it'll take a few minutes to go get the uh, the dead uh, the dead uh, worm thing, as you'd like to call it. Uh, they bring it back over, keep it in a, in a bag. They don't want everybody seeing it. And he brings it to the room, or maybe not in the room with everybody else. Maybe brings it to the, in the side room to where the two dead slotties are. And to show you, did it's in two pieces. They got yeah. chopped in half on accident, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put it back together, have a look, see if it's got teeth in its mouth, get really familiar with it, and then I'll pass it to who's there. There you go. That's what they look like and feel like. You gonna study it too, Usul? Definitely, yeah. Okay. I'd like to try that locate creature on it if this doesn't work. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a good idea, and then we'll get to know whether or not my holy magics work at all. So, can you do Tomlin while like to locate the creature in him if there is one, while I see if Scylla affected? I can do that. Can Dr. P, like, walk in at the worst time when they're, like, both handling this wormy thing together? <laughs> what? what the? Yeah, I actually have you walking in right behind uh, Jindu as, as uh, he's bringing the little bag uh, into him. And the, right, the barrack guards will let you in because, again, you guys pretty much got, like, a key to the town, so to speak, after you kind of uh, defeated the slotty that we're invading. No worries. All right, I'll bring the um, I'll bring the bag of holding over next to Scylla. I'll say you're next, <laughs> and um, <laughs> I'll say, uh, uh, did anything uh, you were clawed and bit? Anything hurt more than the other? Uh, Scylla's gonna keep scratching his chest. That's, I think that's the itchy spot that he's paranoid about, anyways. Okay, all right. Well, lean a little bit forward. <laughs> I'll put the the bag of holding right on the chest. Okay, <laughs> this is good fun. <laughs> um, and. I'll tell everybody to get ready to aim, knock it out if it tries to jump at anyone, but I'll be the closest and I'll do the same. I'll knock off another five points and try and cure the disease of the worm in him. Okay, so you cast disease. your uh, cure disease upon Scylla. Mm -hmm. So I don't know yeah. if you're, are you sitting there with your eyes open? You got your eyes closed? How, how uh, you... I'm watching. I'm looking. I'm, 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 <laughs> I really shouldn't be looking, but I'm looking. Okay. And where do you place your hand on Scylla? Uh, well, it's... It's near the chest where the infection is. So I'll put it on his back, and I'll put the bag of holding right near his chest. So really, the worm's got one way out, which is because he's the one who's the most paranoid. So I'll say, just hold this little bag of holding right near the hole with your chest, and I'll watch it go in if it goes in. And I'll just touch his back and, yeah, try and, like, send the jolt of energy through him and um, see if the worm comes out. Okay, and this is your cure disease thing, he... right? Yeah, I'm okay. gonna call him Tequila if he if the worm does come out. 
<laughs> I just need to see it on the way out so I know what to call out of the bag of holding. Okay. All right. So, Sil, if I guess you're holding this bag of holding over your chest or over the hole yeah, or my, the my, scar. My, hand, my, hand, my hands are so steady too, right? Like, so steady. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll hold one hand. I'll, I'll put one <laughs> hand on the bag and one hand on his back. So, okay, ready? I just imagine, like, Sil's get all nervous and sticking his head in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> <Blah. laughs> they're in the walls man they're in the walls alright so however you're holding the bag uh, Sileth against the uh, uh, the wound on it I hold it just in front of my chest with two hands okay and uh, I'm like leaning forward a little I guess okay yeah. so yeah it's, uh, it's it's just like in front of my chest maybe we get a couple inches away right yeah okay oh. And I'll tell the Silla, you have to look at the creature as it comes out because you need to call it out of the bag if you need it. I'll I'll have one hand on his back. I have the other hand on the bag, what and do you I'm mean, looking call it out at of the bag. <laughs> oh, um, to call something out of a bag of holding, you need to know what went in. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, cool. Okay, okay. I just I, I just got one um, uh, that I'm lending. Ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's sort of like a slap on the back, as if the worm pops. You slap him on the back. Yeah, that's like the healing, so I'll sort of slap him on the back with the healing as it goes out, and not to hurt him, just to... Okay. <laughs> it's like trying to cough it out. All right, so so if you feel this big hand just kind of slap you on the back, and it's almost like a radiating ripple of this warmth it goes all over your back a little bit, and you can feel your stomach kind of rolling a little bit. Matter of fact, you were drunk last night, so give me a, a, <laughs> give me a con save, so let's... Uh, Save, 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 goes, gone... Good enough. Okay, you'd feel like like up into your throat, almost like you you throw up to your mouth. But that's about it. You're able to you know keep it down. But uh, that's all you feel. You don't see or feel anything coming out of the uh, the scar you have. Uh, so it's like it didn't work, man. It didn't work. <laughs> you did my set fucking your... bone. All right, all right. We're gonna do something else. Um, I'll. Is Usul, I'll let Usul do Tomlin and um, and wait to see what he says after doing Locate Creature. You wait and ask who? I'm sorry? Uh, I think Usul was going to try and do Locate Creature on Tom, uh, Tomlin. Yep. Uh, yeah. I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait okay. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, creature and try to you know really look at how it is. Um, you know how it would actually grow, and what it would look like um, while it was still alive, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, locate creature. And uh, at the moment, I'm going to go ahead and uh, direct my energy and uh, uh, direct my concentration on Tony. Okay. So a couple things. So it sounds like, and I, I'm maybe just giving it away here. You're you're assuming that. If it's inside these guys, it's obviously not the exact same thing as what you just looked at. Correct? It's going to be obviously smaller, maybe? Right? Uh, it's right. possible it, it could be smaller. It could be the same size. It just depends on where it is in its uh, incubation period. Okay. All right. So what I want you to do is give me either a nature or a medicine check to see if you can kind of decipher how this thing might be slightly different inside its host. Okay. Yeah, I had a plus nine on that. Wow. How about that? All right. So you've looked it over. Uh, you got a pretty good feel for its somewhat of its anatomy. I mean, you're not feeling you know, overly confident, but you, know, you got a good look at it. So what are you doing with that information now? Uh, I'm going to try to uh, figure out if I can't locate another creature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with that creature, that thing, I'm going to ask them to send that away so it's further away than Tom, uh, Toman. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to um, I'm going to cast a spell and see if uh, I can pick up any anything closer. Okay. One second, I'm just reading through the, the spell here to make sure I answer this correctly. All 
The spell can locate a specific creature known to you or the nearest creature of a specific kind. So long as you have seen such a creature up close within 30 feet at least once. It's not named. Can't locate a creature if running water at least 10 feet wide blocks a direct path between you and the creature. Hmm. Never knew that about that spell. All right, I'm just trying to figure out if this thing lets you locate all creatures or if it's a specific creature. So describe a name. I thought it was the race. Describe or name a creature that's familiar to you. You sense the direction to the creature's location. As long as that creature is within 1,000 feet of you, the creature is moving in the direction of its movement. See, that sounds, that's, that sounds singular. That's... It would say creatures yeah. if it was more than one. Well, it, yeah, but would it tell you the closest one? Yeah, that's why I'm going to rule it. It'll, it'll, it'll allow you to identify one, and it's going to be the closest one. Yep, and it's got a duration anyway, so you'll be able to then differentiate, so walking closer to one on the other, if there's more than one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was hoping as well. Okay, yeah, I'm cool with that. I'll say go for it, buddy. Okay. All right, so with that nature check... I'm going to, yeah, okay, so you cast Locate Creature, and you'll pick up a, f it's not a 100% match, but it's close enough that you realize it probably is related to this thing somehow, like the same species or same genealogy, whatever you want to call it, and you can sense it somewhere within Toman's uh, chest cavity. Ugh. Okay, I'll go ahead and relay that, and, and I'll say, I think Toma needs to die. <laughs> At which point I spit my drink out. <laughs> what, what? What? And stabbed him over the neck with his dagger. <laughs> that is not funny. So not funny at all. Okay, Toma, it, it it sounds like you've got one. Okay, so my oh. my ability to cure doesn't help e even. Um, no, that's no good. All right, try Silith now. Yeah, I, I'm going to move on to Silith, and then, um, you know, whoever else is in the in the area. Okay. And at every every uh, positive result, I'm going to pass a death sentence. Okay. <laughs> Mark me <laughs> in with blood. All right, so I'm assuming you're going like, to just walk around the entire barracks, just walking up close to every single little... Uh, guard and everybody in your party and everybody, correct? That's correct. And each time I'll go, oh, you're going to live. <laughs> and then the next one, you're going to die. <laughs> Just are randomly? Gonna do, are you going to do what they did in Alien? <laughs> Ooh, you've got a bad one in you. <laughs> That's the queen. So in all seriousness, are you doing this like randomly? Or are you like, oh, yeah. if, if they have something, you'll say that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's not like you just walk up to people random. Oh yeah, you got one in you, and he doesn't really. No, no, I'm, I'm actually, you know, I've got an hour on the spell. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna check everybody out. <laughs> okay, that's that's a right. lot, man. That is a, <laughs> that is a great. Elves. They're not wood elves, so who cares? <laughs> okay. All right, so uh, as you make your way around the barracks, um, you get the similar uh, pulse or sensation from Silith. Yeah, it's in his uh, in his shoulder region. And you get the same thing from Buttercup in her uh, gut region. And if you make your way over to the infirmary, you'll find uh, three or four of the refugees over there that uh, also have them in there. And matter of fact, one other one in the infirmary is a real almost exact match uh, to the one you inspected. And that person is sweating profusely and shitting blood and kind of writhing in pain. Silas so so has a solution. So it's like, guys, guys, I got this. Mm -hmm. uh, who's, the, who's the guy that's um, with sweating a lot? Uh, you don't know about that. It's over in the infirmary. I'm just saying if Usul makes oh, his no, rounds. Sorry, sorry. I thought he was with us. No. I'm just saying if Sewell takes an hour and walks all over the place, if he walks over to the oh. infirmary, that's where he'll see three or four other refugees from Ingest that also have this uh, same sensation he's getting from you guys. Okay. Yep. 
we got to quarantine those guys. Okay. Um, Usul, I reckon the one that's the most advanced is going to pop soon, and we'll have a slud. Um, uh, what are we going to do with that poor person? And Jindu's there with you guys. He's the uh, the elf healer. The I, and Jindu, yes. I'm assuming Usul, if you went up to the infirmary, he would walk with you. And as you even approach that one that had you know, was shitting blood and everything, oh yeah, yeah, you don't even have to check that one. We know she's she's got it, but and he kind of pulls you off to the side and whispers in your, she's already too far gone. There's there's nothing we can do for her. Maybe we can take out the creature and store it so it doesn't create an... It, I think if she is going to die anyway, um, then I think the best way to do this is... <sighs> oh, it's horrible, but let's... let's um, we would have to pop her in the bag of holding um, and then the live specimen will go into the bag. Can we just start a large fire? <laughs> mm, we could. So what is your alignment? <laughs> They're not elves. It doesn't matter. <laughs> God. All right, so Jinder's going to want to clarify with you, Diddy says, you want to put the entire woman in the bag? No, uh, it's in her chest. Well, it's 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 in her abdomen right now. It's in her abdomen, um, and she's a hundred percent going to die. All right. Well, the only thing I was thinking is if you cut it out, and um, we just pop it into the bag of holding, and then I will try and bring this woman back to life. Well, that's yeah. We can we can try that. It's the most nicest way we can do this um and she's she's a living person so happy to do it all right very well then that's uh that's what we've had to do for a few other ones that have, have so listen, passed away nowhere's nearby right you can't, you can't hear any of this i'm assuming this conversation is happening over in the infirmary not in the barracks right did he yeah yeah because i want to see how this works before i go over to silith and tell them, <laughs> and tell them what i'm gonna do <laughs> so she's your guinea pig she's my crash test dummy <laughs> Lovely. You thought Usul was bad. <laughs> so, honey, tell me where it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so as Silith and Jindu and whoever else goes over to the infirmary, obviously Toman, uh, Toman, Silith, and Buttercup are going to stay in the barracks as they're under lock and key. Is there any conversations happening with those three or between those three about what Usul just discovered? So, this like, do we know? I thought he was walking around the infirmary and we didn't hear it. No, I meant, but Usul said out loud when he detected it was inside you, detected it was inside Buttercup, detected it was inside Toman, so all three of you guys know that there is definitely something inside you guys. So, so Silas got an idea, then, if Silas heard. You would have told him, right, Usul? <laughs> That's what you made it sound like. Oh, I was, yeah, I was saying dead, that out loud. Dead, living, dead. Yeah. <laughs> I was using oh my, my outside. So, so it's gonna ask Didemeyer how big these things are. Uh, then they're not big. Um, they're probably little, but I can I can try and fix you as we take it out when it's almost ready. No, 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 no. How how big is it? How big is it? It's about the size of a, a, a chihuahua. How about that for a, chihuahua. a size? Chihuahua. <laughs> So, and it's so, angry like a two hour too. <laughs> so so it's like, is there anyone who's who's guaranteed to like might not make it that I can try and save? Oh yes, there is. It, it's so it's like so it's like bring them bring me to them or bring them Hold on, hold on. So, 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 yeah. and Diddy wouldn't have this conversation unless Diddy came back oh, yeah, well, to the I'm... barracks. Okay, okay. Because Diddy wouldn't know yeah, that. No, I'm I'm actually, I'm actually over here. Oh, but I don't if, know where. If you would have said that, why Bay was still there, Silith? Jindu does know. Okay, yeah, yeah, hit me. <laughs> okay, so Jindu would have shared with you. We got, we got someone next door in the infirmary that I feel is a foregone conclusion that uh, the the thing is just too big and she's gonna pass from it. Um, so it's gonna be like, bring them here, bring them here. I might be able to save them. 
And Jin, oh, what's he playing? Yeah, Jindo kind of looked somewhat, uh, maybe not not trusting is not the right word, but looks at you kind of curiously. Says, "What's what's your uh, plan?" So it's like I don't want to. I don't have time to explain. Just get them here. No, no, no. You're sorry. <laughs> you're you're going to explain. <laughs> this is my patient. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm TM, TM, TM. Okay. Yeah, Diddy's looking at you as well and going, um, well, you're already a host of one, so Southern I hope you don't want to Here we go, here we go. Two GM. You see what I'm looking at here? Well, I got to respond to you by a whisper and make sure I'm clear on what your intention is. Hold on, guys. Fun times. Careless whispers. Okay. Hold so, on. Yeah, are you gonna explain that to Jindu? Uh, this this is me explaining to Jindu, like whispering. Oh, okay. So you're doing this kind of somewhat stealthily. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to hear it because I'm I'm amazed that he's trying. To... All right. Since he's really trying to be sneaky about it, he's gonna probably pull him off to the corner. So go and give me a perception yeah. check. You got to get pretty high to hear it. <laughs> I get it. Probably won't. No. No. You notice they're whispering, but you can't quite make out what they're saying. All right. So the uh, uh, Jindu, the elf, kind of looks at you, kind of stands up, still up, and says, Wow, I haven't uh, even thought about trying that before. But <laughs> that that might work. Um, yeah. That's... Let's let's do this. I'm okay with it. You a strong bowel movement is all they need. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So am I am I going to be allowed to leave the thing? Or are they going to bring him here? No, oh, Jindu will kind of him. he'll talk to the Barrett guys, and uh, they pretty much have you here on his command anyway. So yeah, he'll he'll allow you to okay. leave. So we're we're gonna we're gonna troop over to the infirmary. Okay. And so it's going to line up by whoever Jindu tells him is the one that needs the help the most. Mm-hmm. Well, Jindu didn't need to sue for that. He, he pretty much knows. Diddy, Diddy will go definitely with him. He wants to see how he's going to heal. Okay. And Jindu's like, okay, okay. so let's let's hold on, hold on. Let's, because she's in a, a common room right now with, you know, two of the other that, <laughs> that Usul's <laughs> already, already confirmed is infected. Let's, let's move her to a, a private room. If that's, I think it's... Hell, we should move it to the barracks, don't you think? Okay, sure, barracks. <laughs> okay. Let's bring him back. And, uh, I'll say, so, Sila, what's your plan? What are you going to do, buddy? So um, we're going to wait till we have her back at the barracks. Um, an unconscious target is considered uh, w uh, not resisting, right? Well, she's not exactly unconscious, but... No, yeah. no, but the unconscious target is considered not resisting, right? Or not unwilling? Right. I seem to have lost everybody for a second there. Oh. So you're asking if a unconscious person is willing or not? Yeah, they don't get to make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, I'd be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah, because they can't like they can't be like, oh no, avoid this. They're just it happens. Yep. Okay. So um. So we get we take her back. Toman, are you up to speed? What's going on? Well, Toman's back in the barracks. There? No. Didn't he say he lost us for a second there? I think that was Usul, wasn't it? I said that. Oh, sorry. All right, so um, they'll, they'll put the, the woman on a on a cot and carry her over to the barracks, and they'll uh, temporarily allow Toman and Buttercup out of the uh, the room that you guys are all in and, and place all her right, in so there. Diddy's, Diddy's going to be in here with me. I need Diddy. Yep. Okay, and I got, uh, what's his name, Jindu? Jindu's the, the elf healer, yep. Yeah. Uh, well, is there any other guards or anything? No, we're good. All right, it's up to you. Whatever you think we need in here. No. Okay. Maybe like someone guards or someone ready to murder this thing if it starts trying to escape. Yeah, Jindu will bring a couple so, of the, the bouncers in the in the room with you. That's about all you could okay. fit in there. So I'm, yeah. then I'm gonna explain to Diddy. Hmm. And we just doesn't hear. I'm like, uh, no. First I'm gonna ask her. I'm like, okay. I I'm, we're gonna try and heal you. Okay. We're gonna do what we can. She seem accepting of that. Willing. 
Yeah, she, I'm gonna persuade her if I need to. She's like uh, uh, four I'll times worse than you were. I'm dying. Ah, just, I'm dying. Ah, just. We're gonna do it. We can't save you. She's just crying just, and just yeah, puking up blood and yeah. It's like don't worry. We're gonna do what we can to save you. Just uh, to save you. And then just like a, I'm gonna knock her out. Unconscious. <laughs> Are you just doing like a non-lethal blow? Non-lethal blow. Okay, yeah, no problem. She's like, ah! <laughs> and the doctor looks kind of, you know, surprised. You just clock her. <laughs> yep. So she's like, down, whoa, right? whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to explain. I'm going to be like, okay, Diddy, so yep. uh, get your bag ready. I'm going to yep, turn her into a rat. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. I'm going to polymorph her into a rat. That worm will be like a big old tumor because it's not going to change shape when she does. So you're going to need to get the worm cut out of her. The rat yeah. form will die, but she yeah. will turn back into her human form as long as we don't like cut her head off or anything. Gotcha. So like, <laughs> like this thing's in her stomach, yep. so like it's gonna come out of her guts and it's gonna suck a lot, but she's out cold anyways. And when she comes back to it, she won't even know what happened. It'll just be gone. Gotcha. Right. Perfect. So, uh, I'm so I just need ahead. a dagger to cut open a rat, um, squeeze this thing out, or just shake that thing out, and then away we go. Gotcha. And then she'll, the HP, yeah, so from what I read, Polymorph never used it before. Uh, when the H goes to duration or their HP drops to zero, uh, they revert back to their normal form and regain their HP. Uh, they just take damage up to what uh, the amount of HP points they would have lost in the, the other form. Excellent. Yes. Oh, well, I think all we need is the monk who can just stun the creature so it just falls in. Is corn here? Oh, Br Brian's playing his corn. Yeah, you guys can yeah, have corn. That's fine. So, so he yeah. he recommends corn coming in instead of the uh, instead of the bouncers. Yeah, please, because um, if it jumps onto anybody else and gets into them, that's no good. So let's um, the monk will know, and then he can just give it a, like a little bang and stun it while it's there. Um, and uh, and then we just chuck it in the bag. All right. So like we switch out the bouncers and we bring corn in. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. All right, All right. So, so if the rat's just going to uh, revert after the fact, then just pop it like a great big pimple. <laughs> yeah, it's like, almost like that, yeah, kind of. All right, just so I'm clear uh, on the, the what events that are about to happen, you're going to cast Polymorph on this girl that's unconscious. Yep. And, yep. and then as soon as she reverts to a rat, you're going to kill the rat? No, no, We're no. We're going to cut, cut her cut tummy gonna... open so, so we get the thing out. Oh. That should bring her to zero hit points. The it might not was... even. But yeah, if it she might not even. She drops to zero hit points. Like, how much hit points does a rat have? <laughs> like one. <laughs> yeah, so oh, let's I'm say... Using, I'm using a dagger, so it's going to do what? <laughs> and, he, and he's only going to, like, slice the stomach of it, though, so it wouldn't die right away, would it? It's got, uh, one, it's got one hit point. <laughs> It, does, it doesn't matter. Even if it dies, it reverts back and it's still got its original hit points, right, after it, that. So, she, would, she would lose one HP. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to just open her up, and it might do up to four. Um, but uh, And then Thingy can stunning strike it, and then it'll be stunned and non-lethal, and then it'll fall off into the bag, and that's all we need. Okay, we need to have a roundtable discussion here. Because this is something where I've seen it uh, ruled two different ways on how this works. So what we're doing today is we're setting precedence to how this may work in the future as well. So let's okay. talk about this. So I've seen discussions where someone actually as a character chose to be eaten by, say, like a dragon. And then cast Polymorph on the dragon to basically kill the dragon. Or vice versa. Like, they get swallowed by something not as big as that, and they polymorph themselves into a dragon. So, and then just poo explode out of it. And, and I've seen it ruled both ways. Majority of the time, I've seen it ruled where when that happens, then two can't coexist in the same space. They reappear, you know, within five feet of the, the area they couldn't fit in. I've seen others so they, where they, it they, actually they... causes damage if it's too big to fit inside the creature, or vice versa. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. That's why I was asking how big this thing was. Right. So you're baking. You're making it into a rat, which is going to be smaller. A rat would be too small. Yeah. Than, okay. Than so a rat thing would be is. too small. Maybe like, a, like a, a giant gopher? rat. If you make it around about a giant rat size, then that's easy because you will still see the tumor. It's the right size, and it's going to have more than four. So I'll open it up. Okay, but, you know, we'll just. But hold on, I'm not letting you go back and change from change to a rat. 
That was your original thing you said? I didn't change it yet, though. Okay. I don't know, you were talking about it's, it's smaller than the thing, so I may want something bigger. I think you're getting ready to say yeah. that. I'm like, no, you, you, you said a rat, so that's what it's going to be, just so we're clear. Oh. That's, that's fine. fine. It, 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 yeah. It, she was going to die anyways. <laughs> <laughs> She's not an elf. So, so for this one, if she dies, the next one will do a giant rat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, this one is an elf, Usul. Save this woman. <laughs> oh, God. You racist pig. <laughs> All right. So do we have a jar? I'm just also going to say, um, before we do this, I just need a jar about the size of a chihuahua. Because chihuahua. if we pop it in the jar and then stuff it in the bag, then it's going to be um, in the funny environment, but be easily taken outable without it being biting anyone. So Then Jindu, as soon as you say bottle, he says, yes, we can do that, but... They will break through a bottle. That's why the last one was put into a chest. I see. Oh, well, the same chest is good, and then I'm going to drop it in the bag of hot. So that's all good. Okay, so a few more minutes pass as Jindu sends for someone to go back to the infirmary, bring back that chest that the, the other yep. one uh, died in while they're trying to transfer it. And then she'll yep. place the chest on the, on the floor. Still got the unconscious yep. elf laying on the table there. Okay, so... Yep. And I... And I tell the monk to stun it, put it in the chest, I'll close the lid, and then we'll put it in the bag. Stun the rat? No, stun the worm. We're going to cut the rat open, get the worm out. Okay. Stun the worm. Stick this it in is, the cube. This is high-class surgery, okay? <laughs> this, this is. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm making all sure right. I got all the details right. All right, so we are saying, now you're discussing there, what was that thing you said about it separating? Like, they still polymorph, or they switch places, or what exactly is that one? Oh, the two, the two rulings I've, I've seen on this? Yeah. Is where if so like like a, a gnome gets eaten by like a, a bear or a dragon or something bigger than it gets and, eaten whole right and then the gnome polymorphs himself into something even larger like a dragon and just explodes well that's one of the rulings and that's actually the minority of the ones I've seen majority of the rulings I've seen says that uh, you can't coexist in that kind of space and he just reappears as a dragon right outside of whatever it was that ate him. So theoretically, if I made so if we which which one do you prefer honestly? Either one works for this. Mm -hmm. One either she gets smaller and we not, put it out. The other that's one. That's what I'm saying. I'm not them. I'm not telling you which way I'm leaning. I'm just telling you <laughs> once I rule this way, we set a precedence. So this ever happens again, this is how we're going to rule it. So wait, you tell me you have to do this, and then we'll find out. Yes. Yep. But I don't. So I don't know what the polymorph spell does. I don't know if this will happen. Have you ever done this before? Nope. Okay. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. So after this time, we'll know. Yes, you will. <laughs> then he says, "It's surgery 101." Poor rat. Right. All right, ready? All right. I so, got the dagger out. Everybody ready? Everybody's all yeah. ready. Polymorph. Corn's ready. All right. Polymorph yeah. to a rat. Okay. You see, you, poly, you place your hand on the woman, I guess. Uh, is this a, is this a... It's not even. It's not. It's within sixty feet. No, I ain't I'll touching her. I ain't getting near her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we can cast him with his chest and his bag, and corn's getting ready to punch it. I'm just standing back. I'm not going near that. <laughs> I'm already infected. Okay. All right. So you begin casting the spell. And you guys are all standing around nervously, and you you watch the woman's facial features start to change, and her her feet start to kind of shrivel up, and she starts growing somewhat of a tail that comes like sticking out of like her pant legs, and then you see her within almost like a second, she just. Shoop, she shrinks to this small little tiny rat, and you hear, Squeak! and you see, like, she just explodes. Oh. And you see this uh, little tadpole thing just shoot across the floor, trying to find any way exit it can out of there. I'm not even going to roll for corn, because he's going to corner it, you freaking monk. He's going <laughs> to nail it. And whether he, he hits it th two or three times, or he actually gets stunned, it, it's, it's, he's going to knock it unconscious. He's going to go yeah. non-lethal. At this point, you could just use his word too to knock it out, right? <laughs> his word, yeah. You can just say, call it bad names. No, <laughs> no, but Quarren is able to kind of corner it, kind of pummel it a few times, and it stops moving. And he kind of yep. takes a step back and says, I'm not touching it. That's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up. Um, so I'll pick up, I'll pick up this one, I'll pop it in the chest. And I'll lower the chest into the night, the mouth of the bag of holding, close it and lock it. So the environment of the bag of the holding is inside of the chest and just let it in there. So that would have well taken within one turn, six seconds. Uh, so she exploded? Yes. And then she, so <laughs> then she probably back reverts elf. back to her normal self. And you can see she's still got like a, 
almost like almost like her stomach was she like she was fat, but then she lost a lot of weight. She's got a lot of skin there. Okay, birth. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like that. But, Quick uh, thing. Okay, so that's completely not where I thought you were gonna go. I thought you were gonna go like her limbs turned back all over the room. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because no. as soon as she dies as a rat form, she converts back. She did kind of explode because yep. that thing was freaking big, but she reverted back. At, so she, she carried over. Rat was successful. She carried over excess damage. It's. Yeah, uh, any excess da- if it reverts as a result of dropping to zero hit points, any excess damage carries over to its normal. Right. Yeah. So you could just roll a d4 then. Right. I'm saying this is like exploding damage to a freaking rat, so it's not going to be any more than six hit points. But she was unconscious when you guys hit her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So she's now kind of struggling for breath. I will lay a hand on her and give her a hit point back. Okay. And she, she, she kind of gasps. Kind of says up. Very <gasps> 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 successful. Oh, she's got just blood cake coming out of her mouth and stuff, and her her drawers are completely soaked. And she's naked. <laughs> she's naked, by the way, because when she shrunk, yeah. she kind of lost all her clothes. All her clothes. Yep. And she's kind of just laying there in a fetal position, kind of oh, no, crying. Hold on. It says it says the gear melds into the new form, so she would have kept her clothes and everything. Oh, okay. Well, good for you. Don't get to see a, a naked elf. I know. Yeah. It's it's important for Tom and myself later. Yes. <laughs> so Locate, make it ill. So she's lying there in a kind of a fetal position, just kind of crying, or they're kind of holding her, her knees to her chest, you know, and just not looking at anybody, but just in a kind of kind of slowly rocking herself. Yeah. Not saying anything. Did you? Did you pick <laughs> her up and and say, "You're you're saved. It worked." And, I mean, you can't and, even, and give her a hug. And you can't even understand. Uh-oh, She's sorry. trying to talk to you, but it's like lost in so much sobbing, you know, that yep. you just can't figure out. But she just embraces you and hugs you and just won't let go. Now, to be fair, she was unconscious, so she doesn't know what happened. Uh, I have to be conscious for this because I, I cast the spell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've got an idea. And I'll, it, I'll point over to, to, to Silith and say, he he was the one that came up with the idea. You should give him a hug. <laughs> Silith's still not going near because he, he's just got the wheelies now and she's like bloody and stuff and he's not down for that. No, okay. she's, she's blubbering and crying and she comes walking over to you, Silith, and you may try to push her away, but she's not taking it. She she reaches her arms around you and, and kind of gives you a big old hug as well. <laughs> Silith just like stands there like, good. <laughs> And she's got like snot. Yeah, she got. She's crying so hard. She's got like snot and stuff coming out of her nose, and she's it's like getting rubbing her face up, up and he's to like, your neck. <laughs> so he's like just like cringe. Diddy uh, looks at Silas and says, "You're getting married soon. Get used to that." So it's gonna look towards Ginger and be like, "How many more like this?" Well, there's, there's, we got three in the infirmary. They're somewhere in the stages, like your friends here, but nobody's, nobody was far gone as she is. This is, this is awesome. This is great news. We just need to. Find some more people that can that can do that. So Silas gonna uh, Silas gonna ask if anyone else does, or he's just like, well, take me over to see the next guy, or bring the next one here. That's what he's saying. We're just gonna use this room. So like, uh, basically, they're just gonna get escorted into this bloody room that looks like flesh splattered on the wall. <laughs> and we'll be a good time. <laughs> what are we gonna I'll do? Say, hey, I'll say, Silas, it might be time for you to heal yourself, bud. I'll um I'll do the same to you if you want to polymorph yourself. <laughs> so it's like. Uh, how about we do Toman first? All right, Toman. We're gonna you bring Toman in. Yeah, no, oh, I haven't uh, seen it. Oh, I'll, um, I'll <laughs> so, explain. Very so let me let me, let me let me set the yeah, scene. Yeah. Let me set the scene because Toman wasn't in there when this happened. Correct. <laughs> he was outside the room, <laughs> and he would have heard the woman sobbing and crying, and then, and then he didn't hear anything, and then you would have heard a maybe Silith casting some kind of incantation. <laughs> and then you heard a big old splat. And then you heard. Oh, oh no, she was dead. Then you would have heard uh, maybe corn or someone chasing after something Black in the corner, punching. kicking the wall or something like that. And then you heard corn <laughs> say, I'm not touching it. And then you would have heard uh, a woman start sobbing again. Sounds like Silas' wedding night. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, only, so we only Tom it in and say, hey, hey. 
you 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 confront the uh, uh, half its eyes are as <laughs> he looks like an anime doll. <laughs> I'm like, Toman, get in here. We've got a cure. Uh, hey, wait, wait, hey. Toman, Toman, get in here. We've got a cure. <laughs> uh, anybody? Okay. <laughs> so like, she's she's gonna leave. I'm assuming like escorted out by maybe one of those bouncers or something. Well, she's still holding on to you, trying. Oh, okay. Well, get her escorted out. <laughs> Jindu can take one of her, get her away from me, and uh... yeah, Jindu eventually kind of coax her out and kind of and then walk her back into the infirmary the room and see all the blood and stuff. I kind of stopped dead and like <laughs> she survived, right? <laughs> see, you just saw her walk out. She's fine. You trust I, no, me, right? I didn't actually see her walk out because my eyes are locked on the, <laughs> the scene in front of me and I'm playing back everything I've heard over the last couple of minutes going, uh, is she going to be normal? She'll be fine. She'll be fine. Gonna... You trust me, right? Oh, yeah. So Silva's going to look at uh, Korn and look at Diddy Moore and be, Diddy Meyer and be like, are you guys ready? Okay. Oh, I, I, I squeeze oh. my eyes shut. As tight as possible, my fists are clenched. I'm like, okay, oh, I didn't ask, I didn't ask, I didn't ask Toman, but I, Diddy, you ready? I was like, wait one second, tell him what we're gonna do. No, no, don't tell him, don't, don't tell him, it's just happening. Are you ready? Oh, it's just oh, happening. Corn's like, no, 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 come on, guys, we gotta tell him what we're gonna do. Yeah. No, 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 just do it, just do it. I don't wanna know, so I don't wanna like, know, I don't so wanna know. It's like, too late. Oh, he doesn't want to know. Okay. All right. I'll say, uh, Randy, we... you have four seconds. Three. I'll two. Drop your resistance, Tolman. You're going to have to accept it. He already okay. did. I asked him if he trusted yeah. me. Okay. All right. So, Tolman, you feel yourself starting to transform. And since they didn't tell you, I'm trying to figure out how I want to roll this to whether you're going to accept this or not, or I, if you're going to I fight it. I if you trust me first. Well, trusting yes, you and then feeling me. your body starting to change are two different things. <laughs> but I also know it's them doing it. And he so, said, do it. And this is part of the healing, so that's why I said, just do it, just do it, just do it. I don't okay. know about just do it. Okay, well, that's fine. blindly right. accepting. Like a band-aid, just rip it off. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Explode it out of you, whatever. <laughs> It's like a really tiny rat, and I can't... Oh, this is the part I wanted to tell you about, slice. <laughs> this is so not going where I thought it was going to, but this is awesome. Okay, so, Tomlin, you're accepting this, and uh -huh. Silith, you're transforming him into a rat again, right? Yep, same thing. Okay, so, Tomlin, you feel your, your already small stature about to kind of shrink a little bit. You can feel, like, some whiskers starting to sprout out of your nose a little bit, and your nose kind of, yeah. kind of twitches a little bit, and... You feel something growing in your shorts, except it's not where you want it to be growing. <laughs> I'm sorry, then, I missed myself. And then all of a sudden, you just shoop, and you're a tiny little rat, and you're looking up at Diddy and Corn standing there with his fists up, like he's getting ready to punch you. And Silas is right there as well. Okay. Straight in the bunghole. <laughs> Diddy gives him a little pat on the head. So and then I... does he explode? <laughs> No, he doesn't explode. Uh, but we can still see the like the, the tumor, the thing on him. Yeah. Do you, he all you see is a rat. There's there's no there's no, no nothing. Tillman, you're a rat, but give mm -hmm. me a uh, a medicine yeah a medicine check uh, whispered to me. Uh, he gets the stats of the. Uh, Including mental ability scores. Yep. <laughs> Shit, I got looking for rat. Yep. Yeah, he does. <laughs> it's gonna fail everything. What's the wisdom of a rat? <laughs> Where's oh, a rat? This is, this is gonna be ugly. Oh, they actually have a wisdom of ten. Oh, oh, wow, there you go. Wisdom of ten. So it's just. I mean, a it's flat... not negative. A wisdom check. So it's a flat D twenty then. I can't believe that a rat's got. Whisper it to me. Hold on, him. Uh, that's set to whisper, and it's just a d20. Come on, roll d20. You didn't whisper it. No, why didn't that uh, whisper? Oh, because it's see, my wisdom has bonuses, so I can't just do a wisdom. No, oh, uh, subtract two, and now this will be whispered to you. And it's a save. No, it's a wisdom check, not a save. So minus two. Okay. All right. 
All right, so, okay, I can't say this out loud. This is just for you, so I'm going to whisper back to you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and I'm typing this kind of like maybe a rat would think. I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> squeak, squeak. Squeak, 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 Okay. And it's pointing its nose down. Oh, you too. Oh. So actually, if that's the case, then yes, Tommen bends his nose, his pointed nose and mouth towards his belly and starts pushing. So eating? Start Not digging? Eating, pushing. <laughs> just pushing. Like they're poking the spot where I feel what I feel. Is there like a so so? Can we pick him up and like examine him for like a lump? <laughs> sure. Lump we're, looking for a two, we're looking for a tumor. We're looking for a tumor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a retmography. <laughs> Is Usul in here with you guys? Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't. Oh, not Usul. Yeah. I'll... Nope. It's Corn, Dinimeyer, Corn. me, and Jindu. Okay. Usul, would you uh, be like forcing your way in here at any point? Are you good with what they're doing? At some point, but I, I'm, I'm just kind of in the back now. I'm not here. Okay. I'm not in there, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, Diddy, oh, give, uh, give me a straight-up wisdom check. Thank you. No problem. Coming up with wisdom. Uh, do you want me to whisper it to you or straight? Yes, please. Yeah. Tell me if you get it, man. I... There you go. All right, now I gotta whisper back to Diddy. Hold, please. Wait a minute, it's got two tails. Oh wait, that's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to cut off the wrong thing. I'll I'll just call Usul in if he's still got some time. If not, I I've got. So um, I just call Usul in and say, "Buddy, can you tell us exactly. I think it's things coming." I'll just tell him to come close, and then once he tells me where, I'll get the knife out and <laughs> get, I'll just get the monk ready. So it's tell me you and your rat place. form. Did someone pick up the rat? Can I understand? I didn't I pick up the rat. Understand what they're saying, right? That's what I'm, I go back and read it. I'm not sure if you do or not. Uh, uh, last iteration, statistics, challenge, mental scores, game statistics, including mental ability scores, replaced, blah, 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 which retains alignment and personality. Okay. So I have my personality, so I'm just going to be all of can't a sudden. Speak, yeah, if it, you start it, talking, it can't I'm speak, squinting. can't cast spells. All right. I'm squinting my eyes shut. <laughs> and it is overly evident that I'm just squinting, waiting for this to just be over. Yeah. So I am literally oh, in your hands at this point. Diddy literally. does this to make you feel better. He says, okay, um, you can just tell me exactly what you me. Diddy cast speak with animals. He, he whispered it to me, but he cast speak with oh, animals. I whispered it, sorry. I, I told... Say again? You're fading out on me, Diddy. I'm sorry. I cast that on you. Oh, sorry, I cast that on you, buddy. What I did you mine. cast? Oh, speak with uh, animals. Okay. And I'm like, it's in, it's in my belly. It's in here, and I poke my nose again at my midriff where I feel. Okay, yeah. So right in the middle, left, right. Okay, right, gotcha. Right, right where I'm putting my nose. See it? Got it. Yep. I'm straightening up. Just. Okay, hold on. You can't really have a conversation with him. Toman. Oh, okay, true. He, he sort well, of lets sorry. you know. It. So. It says you basically, uh, what to say, can give you information about nearby locations and monsters, including whatever they can perceive or perceive within the past day. Again, so not, I point, you know, I, again, I stick my rat nose into the spot in my belly where I feel it and go, here, here. <laughs> gotcha. Here. Excellent. All right, now I'll, um, I'll bring the rat over uh, to a place where uh, maybe there's a little table, so uh, the monk's got a really good chance. I'll say, it's really tiny, buddy. You ready? And um, I will open him up and cut it out and let the monk beat the hell out of it. <laughs> okay. It's like squishing uh, a bug. Yeah, I'll say, you don't need to keep that one alive. Just kill the shit out of it. <laughs> All right, so you're cutting open the belly of Rat Toman, right? Rat yes. Toman. 
<laughs> and you're letting this happen, right, Toman? Yeah. Okay. I'm doing it. Okay. Dead. I'm, I'm a dead gnome. How am I going to do this? Okay. You cut into it, and the area where, I guess, the rat was kind of looking, and you could sense he was, like, trying to tell you here. And as you do that, you watch the rat start to grow into Toman's size. Yep. And Toman, uh, roll, uh, take, just take one point of uh, hit point damage. And Corn's standing there at the ready, and he's looking around. He's like, I don't see anything. I just um, flick what the gunk on the dagger is like, because I would have cut out his tongue. I wouldn't have been nice about it, because <laughs> I know it's going to transfer him back anyway. And just throw the contents of his tummy onto the table and go, it's in there somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll just say smash it. Just smash the whole stomach in. The, the tummy in. Just you said it to who? Uh, to the monk. Just beat the, the, the corn? It's all right. We don't need that one. Yeah. Okay. Right, so corn kind of <laughs> stands back. He looks at you. looks at all the, the little bit of guts that are on the table right there. And he lifts up a, his leg and he slams his foot down into it. Then he brings his elbow down on it and hits it again. And said, you mean it again? <laughs> uh, that's enough. Um, Who's all? Is it gone? Usul? Is your mic is your mic on mute? Yeah. I'll tell him just to eat him. Tell him just to eat him. Is it gone? You're asking who's that? still got your uh Usul uh, so who's got the spell up that Usul's actually still got the hour of spell up, I suppose. So can you just check and see if he's got the worm in him still, or is it gone? gone? Now I'm going to rule that that, that spell's gone, because you actually walked next door into the infirmary and did a walkabout in there as well before you guys came back over and had a long conversation about what you're going to do next. Can so, you do it again? It's a level four spell, but I guess I could. All right. So you're going to cast it again? Yeah, I'll cast it again. Okay. So as uh, you... Go ahead. I was just going to say, hey, we need to mark these people next time. This time. Yeah, we do. <laughs> okay, you said that to, okay. to the Jindu or to the Barrett guys? What are you, what are you saying? To everybody. I, I don't want to waste my, my mana here on, you know, redoing spells that I've already done. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're going to keep everybody that you already identified. I'm saying, um, because we just did the surgery on Tom and it was a really small one, we just want to make sure it came out in the guts and we just killed the guts out. Uh, we just want to make sure that that worked. Okay, here we go. Okay. Tolman, I want you to roll me a d20. Okay. Um, as you're kind of casting out the magic, Usul, you get a faint, very faint scent, almost like it's, it's non-existent, but there's like pieces of it there on the table amongst the little bit of blood splatter. That, that Not corn. in Toman at all? No, you don't pick up anything in Toman. Okay. I'm going to say you need to burn that stuff there. <laughs> we do. <laughs> I'll say, anyone who's got that fire spell, you can give it to hell. Yeah, Sylvia would be all over that if she was in there. Uh, Silas, can I go ahead and do a... What's that? Um, Sacred Flame. Sacred Flame. Yep. <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Look at that. That thing is dead, roasted, <laughs> and gone. Uh, and, I'll, and I'll say to Tillman. Okay, for Silas, I, I can still see the... Uh, the slotty slug inside of him, correct? Inside of who? So it's the left. Yes, and in Buttercup. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just worried about Silith. I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> uh, extract that from uh, Silith. What, what do you mean extract it from me? What? <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait! We've got to get him to change. <laughs> oh, look at him casting another I'm uh, beast. Dominate beast. A beast that you can see within range. So tell me what your intention here is, Usul. 
Well, because I had that other spell up, uh, I, I could actually see this beast inside of uh, Sileth. So my intention is, is to create a telepathic link with it and tell it to um, burrow out of his body and, and uh, I don't know, Junior. <laughs> I don't think it's What? I don't think it's a beast. <laughs> <laughs> two, two. Uh, you can't, you can't see it with that spell. You just know where it is. <laughs> three, Silith will set you on fire. Silith <laughs> will set you on fire. <laughs> oh my god! One, one way or the other, we'll cure you. <laughs> I just go. Oh boy! I'm crying. <laughs> so Burrow your way out. Go ahead. Go, go your way out. Yeah. Go to the light. Go to the light. That tube. That tube down the bottom. That's the way to go. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> oh, did he just oh. start a case? Oh, oh I love man. This party. I so, I so wish these things were beasts. I so do. Uh, <sighs> but Sills, you, ca you cast a spell. <laughs> Again, this is. <laughs> Telepathically, I'm assuming you're telling this thing to burrow its way out. And yes. So you watch is like Usul's like got this intent look on his face, and he's <laughs> he's looking at, he's looking right where your wound is, and you can see him concentrating and you know maybe doing some some <laughs> gestures with his hands and just concentrating. And Usul, you're just standing there like, okay, what? What now? <laughs> I think it's, I think it's uh, I forgot to tell you they're abominations. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, how many more of those changey spells have you got, Silla? Uh, Silla's so gonna do a quick little mana check and be like, uh, eight. Holy crap! Well, let's do the bear next. Um, let's call the owner in. <laughs> and can you now dominate this bear and ask it to lay down <laughs> and accept? What's gonna happen? <laughs> and, uh, and ask and ask Twig to come in and hold it for. So it's just like, wait, oh, it's the size of my whole body. Yeah, well, uh, the buttercup the is yours, isn't it, Twig? Well, yes, she accompanies me. So, so uh, we get Twig in here, and we can explain that Buttercup is about to be—you're about to get a role reversal in your relationship. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be big spoon. Twig, is it all right with you? We do this. If if it'll help her, yes. But okay. you got to understand, her paw is the size of my body. I see. All right. Well, we just wanted to make sure you're okay with the bear. Um, you can wait outside if you. Want. It's um. We're no, going to change I, it to be really small. I'll stay in here with her, but which I might need to after you do whatever you're going to do, because she might try to bite you. Gotcha. So. Uh, we're we're gonna have Usul dominate Beast, right? Yeah, that's that's the plan. <laughs> uh, um, oh, uh, no, I think you just um, you just oh, uh, oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, well, what do you think, Usul? Can you do it again on the bear so the bear he, doesn't he resist? Just, he just went AFK. Ah, uh. are you okay with this? Yes, yeah, yeah. so far. Okay. You know what? Can we just knock out the bear? Like, if it doesn't know what's happening, it'll be fine. <laughs> oh, it's going to turn into a into an attack fest. I think the best thing is that um, Twig, Twig holds Twig, onto its hand. Twig looks at it and goes, "Have you ever seen the skull of a dead bear?" Dead bear? We're yes. not going to kill it. I know you're not going to kill it, but have you ever seen a skull of a bear? Yes, probably. Maybe. Oh. So I've seen some dead things. Built like a wagon. Yeah, but Usul can just tell it to go to sleep. Well, that would work, but knocking it out with uh, with something would not work very well. Same yeah. difference, as long as I've it's got, not awake. <laughs> I've got an idea. I'll cast... Um, oh, wait, is the other one still in existence? Let me just bring up the spell again. Uh, it is... No, it's a one-action thing. I'll just talk to Buttercup. I'll say Buttercup <laughs> and pass over <laughs> what we're going to do. No, Usul's back. Usul put the bear to sleep. <laughs> oh, oh, did he finish his thing, though? So he's having a conversation <laughs> with uh, with Buttercup. With Buttercup. Twig, do you want to roleplay so, that? You want me to. 
Uh, you go I ahead. Have, yeah, okay. I'll happily not play with it. Um, yeah, I'll say Buttercup. Um, you have something that's in your tummy um, that is a parasite that will kill you. Um, we are going to take it out. Um, you will change from Big Bear to Little Rat back to Big Bear again, and you'll be better. Hurts a little bit. Please don't bite my face off once this happens. And the bear's kind of looking at you, all content, and she kind of tilts her head to, to one side and looks down at her belly, and she kind of gives it a little scratch. She's up on her, mm-hmm. uh, she's kind of sitting up she, on, on her on her rump. Uh, her front paws are kind of out in front of her, like she's sitting on like an Indian pose, so to speak. Tilts her head back to you again a little bit. Didi has a little joke now with, she, the, with Buttercup and says, it's actually Scylla who's casting the spell on <laughs> <laughs> If you want to swipe it in. It laughs. She kind of, she starts leaning toward you as you said that last part, and then she turns her head, looks at Scylla. <laughs> and her eyes kind of narrow just a little bit. I was like, he doesn't mean you harm though. It, it, it will hurt a little bit. So hold on and we'll do the best we can. She kind of scratches the spot on her, her belly there again a little bit, still looking at Silith. And she turns back to you, Dee, and she, and she licks you in the face. And she leans back <laughs> down on her back. All right. We're doing this. Everybody ready? Yep. And... Skadoosh. To a rat again, right? Rat. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was a rat. Okay. <laughs> you see this... Uh, Are you in the room, Twig? Yes. Okay. So Buttercup kind of... Turns and looks at you, and she has like a scared look in her face as she can feel herself starting to kind of shrink. And you watch as her body, start, her fur starts to kind of shrink up into her body a little bit. She's like a, a giant, uh, almost like a skin, uh, a hairless bear. And she starts shrinking more, and a tail comes out, and poop, she pops down into a, a little rat. And she gets up on all fours, and she's looking all around, and she kind of, kind of scurries over to you, Twig, and kind of. And by your ankles as she's looking around at everybody else. Okay. All right. So tummy was where it was. Um, and where she scratched, I go, okay, yep, that where that is. And I'll do the same thing. So dagger, tummy, bear. <laughs> or dagger, tummy, rat. <laughs> okay. Now, again, you going to – you want to role play Twig as a rat? Yeah, me too, Twig. No, go ahead. Okay, so how are you going about getting Twig? You forgot to share the part about you cutting into her. Um, I say to her, I'm just going to get it. Uh, I have to cut it out. Can you tell me where it is on your body? It's on your tummy. Just point now as a rat because I can still speak with the animals. So I'll say, where's that itchy bit? Where's the pain? <laughs> she kind of... Puts her front her front two paws up on up on like a twig shin area, and she looks up at twig, and she looks over at you again a little bit, she looks up at twig again, and then she takes one hand and she kind of rubs her uh, uh, his belly in one little spot, kind of the right side of yep. uh, her abdomen. Yep. But she's still I'll, I'll that, one hand's holding on to twig's pant leg. <laughs> You can hold her little rat hand if you want. That was the twig, twig, right? Yeah, twig just kind of looks confused. Like, okay, my bear's a rat. What are you doing with it now? Uh, I have to take its tummy out. It'll revert um, as soon as I do this. But I know where the I know where the creature is, and then I'm just going to get the monk to beat the shit out of it. So, not your rat, but the thing. Ready? One, two, three. I'll, once again, I'll cut it out onto the little table so the monk can easily just smash it to bits. And um, I'll step back as Buttercup starts to change. But as you approach the rat with your dagger, again, it's, it's st- mm-hmm. still got a tight grip on, on Twig's pant leg. The, mm-hmm. the rat kind of hisses at you a little bit and kind of goes back around behind Twig's leg. Uh, I'll try and convince Buttercup. We have to do this to get that bad thing out. But take your time if you need it. Give me a persuasion. Okay. Um, I'll try... Um, I'll ask Twig if he can help me with the persuasion. Twig will help him. Okay. Okay. So you want me to whisper this to you? No, you can put it out in the open since Twig's helping. That's fine. 
Okay. Oh, man. Persuasion. Help my, my, my best thing. <laughs> hey. Yeah, there's no point in me even rolling. You see the <laughs> twig kind of sticks one head out from behind Twig's leg and looks up at Twig and kind of puts a head down and kind of slowly kind of walks out in front of Twig, kind of goes around a little circle, kind of like Buttercup does when she's getting ready to lay down. And then he lays down and on his back, got his belly open. <laughs> does, does I say down? Once again, point to where the problem is. Does she put her hand on the other side this time? <laughs> All right, so wherever it is. No, she looks at Twig, and then she looks at you, and she points one of her little rat fingers at you, Diddy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, I will pass Twig the dagger and say, you can cut it out if you want. Um, it's just there. And um, just cut out. As, go deep. You know, don't don't spare the horses and throw it out onto the table and um, and then the monk will Twin just kinda of says, Okay, hold still, Buttercup. Post a couple of things in Discord for you. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> Rat free. <laughs> I'll pass the dagger over to Twig and let him do the operation. I love how we got an operation. We're yeah. real medical specialists. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Twig, so I guess you do the deed? Yeah. What role do you want? Uh, no no role for you. It's a role I got to do for uh, for Buttercup. Okay. Okay. All right, so you immediately, as soon as you start cutting into her, her belly, you hear a familiar, not like a rat squeak. It's almost like you hear the bear in a tiny form kind of squeal and cry. As you see the, the light go out of the eyes of the rat, and then poof, she converts right back to uh, her full self. And she, oh, she stands back up, and she's kind of rubbing her belly where she, she got cut. And you got a little bit of blood on your, your dagger there. Okay. I, I, I'm contemplating the size of a bear compared to a rat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the size of a gnome. <laughs> And she kind of pushes you out of the way as she converts back to a, a, a bear. And then she kind of nuzzles uh, your head from up above. Kind of licks you up one side of your head and gets your entire ear in her tongue. Yeah, his, his mustache is sticking up the wrong way now and the hair on the side of the head. And Corrin's still standing there like, okay, what am I supposed to punch? <laughs> uh, it's just the gut bits. On the dagger? Uh, yeah, yep, yep. Uh, well, we'll scrape it off onto the table like we did last time and just beat the shit out of it. <laughs> Corn almost like laughs as you say that. It's so, okay. That's what happened last time. So, Twig, are you going to kind of scrape the, the, the knife off on the edge of the table, or what are you doing? Yeah. Now? All right, and Corn's like, uh, okay. He walks up and he's kind of like punching the edge of the table <laughs> five or six <laughs> times. He says, I feel kind of stupid. And then you see this little worm at microscopic with his little arms up. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he pulls his fist up and he's got a little bit of blood on his knuckles there or his uh on his uh his gloves i guess so to speak that he's got so uh <laughs> okay how's that uh, i think you, well i mean you definitely pumped the hell out of that but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i feel so powerful <laughs> oh say so, um Oh, have you got anything? Oh, Usul, you cast another spell in between, didn't you? So you don't have the thing up again. Oh, dear. Um, uh, is the bear cured? I'm back. <laughs> also, How also, are you going to determine Usul, that? I'll say, Usul, um, have you got another fourth level spell or do you want me to use my one? What's that? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> me wings. <laughs> Um, have you got any of those fourth level spells left? Me? Yep. So, oh yeah, so it's like, yeah, I can do this like seven more times. Oh no, I meant Usul for the, um, the oh, he needs oh, to sorry. just detect, because you're going to have to change yourself and we're going to have to do it to you. As well. You're basically asking Usul to cast locate object or locate creature again, is that right? Yeah, I, I thought he kept it on, but he, he cast um, the dominate animal in between it. So. <laughs> okay, so... Actually... Actually, my other one should still be in effect because it was lasts it, an hour. But was it concentration? Okay. Yes. Okay, then you lost it because Dominate Beast was concentration as well. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh. 
<laughs> All right, buddy. One more time, but I'll only keep that one spell up. <laughs> Ready to go? <laughs> Can you, you cast it again? <laughs> so what broke my concentration? The dominate beast. When you tried to oh, tell right, that thing to crawl up my ass. To that again. Yep. Yep. So I did. I did the uh, uh, locate creature. And then I did Dominate Beast, and then I did Locate Creature again. That's how I found it on that table. And okay, all right, cool. All right, so we've got it there available. No, 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 so... no, no. You did not cast that after um, Twig cut him. I didn't hear you say that. Oh, you know what? I did, and then I then I tried to cast, uh, or I casted uh, that, uh, yeah, you're right. The Dominate I'm Beast, cast yeah. It. Yeah, you gotta cast it again. Okay. Okay. All right. So now All you're right. going to cast it again. Make sure you're taking the, sp the the mana points off. That's why I'm just making sure. Yeah. Yeah. I have. All right. So you are going to cast it again, correct? Lo locate creature. Yes. Okay. Not dominate beast. I'm confused. Are you going to cast locate creature or dominate beast locate right creature. now? Locate creature. Locate creature. No, you gotta gotta do locate creature, buddy. Okay. And and who am I looking at? Oh, you just keep it up, and we'll we'll keep bringing people in and polymorphing them and do it. So the bear is the first one. Put a cup. Okay, here we go. Okay, you start casting the magic again a third time. <laughs> getting really, you're getting really good at it, Usul. This time you kind of like do it with one hand. <laughs> yeah. And you kind of scan the room a little, walk around a little bit. You go up to the uh, the blood and guts that was on the table that got scraped off, and you kind of. Scan over that and over uh, Corn's knuckles, and you don't pick up anything on that. You go back over towards Buttercup, and you still sense something inside Buttercup. Oh, Twig, you didn't cut deep enough. But I know it's hard. Um, okay. Uh, how many more so people have we got? There were three other people in the infirmary. All right, let's get it Plus out of Silith. one. <laughs> Plus Silith. All right, Silith. Um, you're up, buddy. Let's do you. No, isn't uh, uh oh, Buttercup, Buttercup still? Yeah. I was like, oh yeah. All right. Okay. Well, let's, let's bring in how, how many more? How many of you got more? Have you got? Because we need to make sure we've got enough in case you fail for yourself. Say twice, and let's say twice for Buttercup, and we'll try and save everybody else after that. So, so, so Toman's good. So it's like we'll do Buttercup, we'll do me, and then we'll carry on from there. <laughs> gotcha. All right, Buttercup. This time I'll say, sorry, Twig. Um, I know it, that was hard. So uh, I'll say, can you, I'll, I'll talk to Buttercup because I've still got a bit of concentration on my one and I'll say, um, but uh, Twig was very nice and very precise, but wasn't, didn't de dig deep enough. Um, it didn't hurt too much, did it? So you ready for another go? Who are you talking to? Uh, the Buttercup, bear. which is you. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll say, we'll try and make it uh, not unbearable. Is your speak with animals still up? Uh, probably. If it, Should it if last we one just... minute? Yeah. Uh, I think it's 10 minutes. Oh, it's 10 minutes? Oh, no, it's the dominant yeah, yeah. that's one minute. Sorry. Yeah, no, it, it lasts a fair, fair bit of time. Okay. So this is what I'll do. So Buttercup kind of looks over at you, like... making. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you All right. pointed to the left side, not the right side. <laughs> Okay. All right, so you guys tell All me. Right. You guys tell me. We can at this point. Jindu is going to see what you guys are doing, and he's going yep. to he's going to excuse himself to head back towards the keep. And he's going to try to get a couple of the other druids to uh, help out with this because yep. he's and just he's, he's, make he's sure sold. Just... He's sold that this works. Man, it's not 100. percent He saw from what happened just happened with Buttercup, but he's going to go talk to Jodel and Kudwar and whoever other druids that can round up. To kind of do this on some of the other folks that they think are infected as well. So and I'll say, don't forget to do it in isolation, right? So you know you have to beat the shit out of the um, the leftovers when you right. take them out. Right. <laughs> so it's up to you guys. Do you want to continue to kind of role play this, or do you want to kind of cliff note this as okay? You guys will eventually, you know, get I've the thing out. One. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just eventually do it. Okay. So I mean, I mean even if you, I mean, how many spell slots do you have left to cast? Um, polymorph, Silith. Uh, I can cast it. Oh, hold on. Or, uh, mana, I should say, not spell slots. It's mana. Uh, I can cast. Hold on. Let me do my spells. Three, four. Hold on. 
I might have I might have been off by one count. So hold on. Sorry, I cast it three times so far. So oh, two, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I can cast it uh, two, 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 four more times. Four more times? Okay. Four more times. I thought it was five. It's four. Okay. So I'm going to rule that with your last locate creature, so that'll give you enough time to kind of get it over Silith and Buttercup. So you shouldn't have to cast it again, assuming they don't fail. So all I'm going to do is roll a few times just to see if it fails to get cut out, kind of like what happened with Buttercup. And as long as it doesn't exceed four, then you guys are good. You guys okay with that? Okay. Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay. I'm going to be heavy-handed when it comes to cut out the tummy. <laughs> okay. <It's> like, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> going to cut Buttercup in half? <laughs> I'll just take the whole stomach right out. Yep. Right. I'd rather help her than, than uh, you know. Okay, so I'll have them do the. I'll have Buttercup do hers with advantage, and she's gonna like just rip her guts out. <laughs> yeah. I'll do the same to Zillith as well. I go, Zillith. Zillith is gonna stare can... at you with his little beady rat eyes and very judging. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just kind of paraphrase what happened. So you you kind of rip you know the rat's entire belly out for Buttercup this time, and Buttercup yep. reverts back. And as soon as she comes back, she comes roaring towards you and kind of slams your onto your chest. And she's on top of you, just kind of growling as some spittle and saliva is kind of coming out of her mouth. You but, know better now. <laughs> but this time you got all the guts out. Corn punched it in, and it's all good. So let me roll this for Silith now. Are you going to do the same thing with him? Rip his guts exactly. out? Exactly. I'll go now. You know I did say it was going to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. First time you do it, don't. It's still in Silith. So oh Silith. fuck! <laughs> Are you twisted? Silith, yeah. So Silith, so just in between, Silith's gonna come back and just like very judging and like haggard and just like real pissed off looking. <laughs> Did he says you said groin, didn't you? Oh, shoulder, <laughs> shoulder, shoulder. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. <laughs> All right, so this will be polymorph number three. You say you could do it four more times, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is the third one. <laughs> a natural one. Hope it's still inside you, Silith, after your third try. Silith's gonna. So Silith's back to human. He's just gonna grab Diddy's head and be like, "Okay, there's. You can do this. Just what the just hell? Cut my arm off if you have to. <laughs> your one hates you. Oh, it actually loves you. All right. Um. Well, it is Valentine's Day, so let's lay you down. <laughs> Christ. All right, last I'm going to one. Your one because I, I want to see uh, so what a Silith little is, tiny. Silith's going to go rat form. He's going to lay on the ground and he's going to like stick his arm out and just like start like slapping his shoulder like, <laughs> with his little little rat. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm dyslexic. Oh, that one. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> um, you ever see a rat look really aggressive at you with like hissing? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll use my what's left of my speak with animal. Find out exactly where it is and then yeah. Um, I'm going to take the whole <laughs> arm off, <laughs> with at, like right at the right at the above the shoulder. Bone. This is going to be God. brutal. <laughs> take the whole thing off. All right, so I might be. I'm gonna roll this one with advantage. This is gonna be a straight roll here. Okay, yeah. All right, so <laughs> all right, so this time you know you cut the arm off and you throw the arm up against the wall and it sticks and corns over there beating the shit out of the arm, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's like two inches long. It's a rat arm. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was say, it's kind of comical watching corn over beat the shit out of something that's about two inches long, you know. But you guys watch as, as Silith reverts back, and you see where his arm used to be. There's like a little bit of limb that's like kind of flapping there. <laughs> as, it's, as it's slowly growing into a normal, uh, uh, you know, dragonborn arm. But uh, and, able to get it to stop. You guys the Deadpool, the says, the Deadpool movie? With yeah. the baby legs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my arm. This is where Diddy's funny sense of humor comes in. He goes, "Sorry, buddy, we didn't get it." And then big smile appears on his face. <laughs> <laughs> and then he says, "No, I think we did." <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh man, that was good. All right, so all three of you guys are now, you know, tadpole, whatever you want to call it, worm infested free. And over the course of the next couple hours, Jindu and Jodel and Kudwar would do the same thing with a few other druids uh, on the, the few that they uh, were able to determine 
or actually infested. They use the same technique that you guys have basically uh, come up with here, the locate creature uh, combined with the uh, um, polymorph to kind of continue to rip these things out. And, and Jindu is, is just, he can't stop thanking you guys for coming up with this idea that uh, said as long as we have you know a druid on staff, uh, that we should be able to continue to do this. Now, I say druid. Um, Usul, you there? Yep. Okay. Does do druids have polymorph as well? Or is that another class? I'm trying to remember. Uh, yeah, we do actually. Okay. Yeah. So a druid should be able to do both the. Uh, um, uh, what is it called? Polymorph. Locate oh, creature. Locate. locate creature and the polymorph. Okay. All right. Between, druid, sorcerer, wizard. Yeah, and between the druids that you know, Joe Dell knows and some of the temple clerics that came over from Injast, I guess they probably had a, a couple of them that are high enough to cast that. How high you got to be to cast that, uh, Silith? Uh, it is a le fourth level spell. So what is that, like level eight to cast fourth level uh, spells, I think? I think, I think so. Uh, I technically, te so I only so have it because of my domain. Ah. Right, so it's not a cleric spell, but because I'm the trickery domain, that's why I have it. Ah, okay, all right. Well, again, meta game. They can figure out a way to to do it, and they are so thankful for you guys for for coming up with this idea here. We call it the Lithmere treatment. <laughs> <laughs> the, the what treatment? <laughs> the Lithmere treatment. Lithmere. <laughs> As right. seventh level as a druid, you get one fourth level spell. Uh, eighth, you get two. Okay. So, okay. At fourth level, they could learn it. Which okay. Start. Okay. All right. Again, it's it's not something that's readily available by a lot of people here, but they're able to come up with a, enough to kind of help those that they've been able to confirm are are inflicted by it. Yeah. And and we'll say the longer the term, which is really cool. The further they are gone, the easier it is to do. <laughs> the fuck, it just explodes out of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Jindu was like, yeah, it's just probably just a little bit more unpleasant for the host. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> I mean, that elf chick does seem a little traumatized. <laughs> yes, she was. All right, guys. She's alive, right? Well, <laughs> so you're all cured. Uh, what do you guys want to do next? We got so go to like to go back to drinking. <laughs> uh, did, did you say we we should go back to the the keep? They're going to tell us what were they going to do with the gem core extractor. But yep. bring a drink with you; you're going to need it. Yep, that's true. And as as this is going on, I'll say that Joe Dell and Cudwar you now would have met with you guys and said, you know, heard about how you guys are doing this, and they would have spent the next you know two or three hours kind of going through and checking everybody and and performing this several times on some people to, to get it right. So your meeting with them will be delayed until for a couple hours at least while they go around and, and basically cure people of this ailment that there was no cure for before. So good job, guys. With the, what's it called? The Silmire? Uh, the Lithamere the, the lithomere treatment. <laughs> okay. It's called the treatment. Okay. Or Usul, as my are you, good are you... friend Usul likes to call it, give him the business. <laughs> So, so you're offended at all that you know, the name of this uh, procedure doesn't have your oh, name we'll in put, it at all? We'll put, his, we'll put his name in there as well. So what did we? What would we call it? Lith, Lithel, Lithelmeyer. <laughs> I'm updating. Uh, I'm updating Silas personality traits. Okay. <laughs> Another flaw added to the list. No, that no, that's a personality trait. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> have you, do or you do you want to call flaws? it Silomaya? We could call it Silomaya as well. <laughs> <laughs> just 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 for the record so in case you guys don't remember Silas uh his flaws are read in this order the temptation of shiny treasure is never far from this dragonborn's heart doesn't like birds especially large birds griffins he is afraid of griffins and also now he has a fear of heights slightly racist to gnomes why can't all gnomes fix everything low alcohol tolerance <laughs> he's he's been proceeding down his yeah He's getting a little worse. And you're getting married to him, no. <laughs> well, only if he comes back to this town after saving the world. You will never see him in this neck of the woods again. <laughs> <laughs> so, that reminds me. Um, Twig, you haven't really met Joan Path up to this point, correct? 
just passing him on the street when he walked in. Okay. Um, go ahead and give me a... I don't want to do this. Not a perception. Give me a history check. Determine whether or not you would have recognized him from your past. Hmm. Okay. So, uh... The face looks familiar to you, but the name does not. Okay. So I recognize him, but I don't. The the name doesn't match what I know. Yeah, the face looks familiar to you from your time in Telflam. Okay. Okay. So metagaming. None of you guys know that, but I felt it was important to say that out loud. <laughs> All right. What do you guys want to do next here? Let's go to the keep. What do you reckon, guys? South would like sleep and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're going back to the keep, it's going to be a couple hours before Jodell and Kudwar get back with you. I mean, Brevin will be there. And who knows who else you might see there. But Jodell and Kudwar are busy uh, curing people with the wow. the, the Lillemeyer Ool method, or whatever it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Little Maya. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a bath. I feel gross. <laughs> Let's do it. I mean, like, we'll... everyone that's in that room technically. Covered in Little Maya. It's Little Maya. I like that. All right. So, you guys want to head to the Squeaky Tinker? I'll take baths. You guys want to go your own separate ways? Just let me know. Uh, are we just going to all congratulate each other, go for a bath, and then head to the keep? Sure. And then have a short break in the bath. All right. So as you guys make your way over to the Squeaky Tinker, as you're walking through the streets, I mean, all kinds of people are going to come up to you guys and pat you on the back and want to shake your hand and, and thank you for what you what you did the day before. And you even get a few more people that are even more ecstatic, like family members of some of the people that were uh, supposedly in, infected. Just come up to you guys almost crying and, and hugging. You get more of the, the snot-filled crying people on your neck again, Silith, that you love so much. And you also have uh, Joan Path and Sione kind of walking behind you guys and and kind of walk up to you again. Silith said, Silith, Silith, I heard the great news that, that you're going to live. Sione here is just, she just can't, she's just so excited. And you see her kind of roll her eyes as, as he says Why that. Why's she got a dagger at <laughs> <laughs> so, so while like he's doing that, on it. so yeah. while he's doing that, Twig turns around and says, "Aren't you from Telflam?" And Joan Beth kind of looks somewhat nervous around a little bit. Well, but yeah, I, I came here from Joan Beth when I retired. I mean, from Joan Beth. <laughs> I came here from <laughs> Tel, Telflam whenever I, uh, whenever I uh, retired. Yes, that's true. Uh, I thought I recognized you. Hi. Uh, Okay, are you from Telflam as well? Yes, you might say that. Hmm, he asks your name. Lord Ray Falcor Zinn. Lord Ray Falcor Zinn. Zinn, I'm familiar with the name, but I don't think I've met you before. What was your father's name? Dervish Zinn. Oh, yeah. Of, Z of Zinn Shipping. Yes, yes. Okay, that's where I've heard the name before. Well, a pleasure to meet you, sir. I'm I'm Joan Path, Joan Path Morning Itch. And he kind of extends his hand out. Twig extends his hand, and, and when, he, when he grips it, he kind of pulls him high and says, that's not the name you used in Telflam. And you see his eyes get wide a little bit, and kind of lets go of your hand, takes a step back, says, well, uh, nice meeting you, uh, Lord Zen. We'll, uh, we'll have to uh, touch base uh, again and catch up on some of the old times. And Silith, I'll, I'll be seeing you. And he kind of walks off as Sony's just, Sony's just kind of again rolling her eyes, like, oh god. And she whispers something under her breath again. Silith's uh, so just gonna be like, eavesdropping. Right. <laughs> no, Silith's so, so not even eavesdrop. He's just gonna like the opposite direction of them. That's where he goes. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else twig, you want to do with that twig? Twig just, twig just kind of watches him go. Yeah, you see, he's kind of, he's not really like running, but he's kind of walking briskly back and kind of turns around every once in a while and yells at his daughter to kind of keep up with him. 
He makes his way yeah. back down the street. When he turns around, he can see that Twig is still watching. Him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and he sees you out of the corner of his eye, but tries to avoid eye contact because he continues walking right. the opposite direction. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the rest of you guys, anything else before you head back to the squeaky, squeaky tinker for a bath? I mean, like, are the people in town noticing us, like, all covered in, like, grass? Yeah. Nobody's saying anything? Well, I mean, <laughs> to be fair, you were covered in blood when you came in through town, because you were oh, all in that battle out, out, outside. With the exception of the... bloody and wounded and... Yeah, the guys that were at the campsite kind of cleaned up somewhat, but there's still going to be, like, a little splatter oh. of blood on their, you know, uniforms or, or their armor and stuff like that. And Diddy Meyer was squeaky clean before he showed up. <laughs> <laughs> right. So again, over the course of the next hour or so, the Squeaky Tinkers uh, uh, patrons there or the, the owners will greet you guys all warmly and, and offer you, you know, uh, the best baths of the house on the house uh, for your, your hard work and your gratitude and for saving them, basically. So you guys will get primped up to the nines, and you guys will all gain an extra three temporary hit points for the rest of the day. Okay. Uh, that puts me into triple figures. <laughs> really? Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. How many was that? Three. And yeah, not thirty, Diddy. Three. <laughs> no, I only needed three. <laughs> hey, I got I got sixty six hit points. Six hundred more, and I'll be the sign of the devil. <laughs> okay. I'll try to remember that. <laughs> All right, so after this, I'm assuming you guys are going to head to the keep to have your conversation with uh, Brevin and uh, Jodell. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. All right, so matter of fact, as you guys are still in the squeaky tinker, I'm assuming one of you guys probably would have asked the patrons there to let you know when Jodell and Kudwar came back. So they'll obviously let you guys know that. Um, they'll be asking for a tip whenever they can by holding out their hand. So whether you guys want to tip or not, that is your call. Don't need to let me know. Just take it away from your uh, your character sheet. Actually, I do need to know. If you do tip, just let me know. Put it in chat. And then uh, that may or may not impact things in the future. Okay? Tip the squeaky tinker. <laughs> At the bathhouse. Oh, uh -huh. any kind of servant. Is, they're going to ask for a, a tip. That's what they live off of. I'm pretty sure you've seen me before tipping nothing yeah. and handshakes. Because yep. that's still a... And that's why I said, if you're tipping, put it in chat. And that may or may not come into play later. One gold piece tip? Jesus. <laughs> well, he is you a gnome, gold... you know. He's like, you know how much a gold piece is, right? Okay. <laughs> Silla's version of a tip is scratching off some of his like like dandruff flakes, which are copper because he's a copper uh, dragonborn, and handing those over. Look, it's copper. <laughs> <laughs> You, you will notice several of them kind of curl their nose at you a little bit, uh, Sileth, as they kind of, you know, thank you for your... Uh... I'm, not, I'm not actually doing that, but I'm just saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. That yeah, there will be repercussions for that, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you guys all make your way out of the, the squeaky tinker. Got your uh, your new... What are you doing there, Diddy? Sorry. Uh, I'll me. just give him the, that gold and silver. Ah, okay. Very good. Yeah. All right, so you guys make your way back over to the keep after uh, one of the little servant boys kind of let you know they're back. And I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the stuff they share you, share with you as far as uh, your next day plan. So feel free to stop me at any point during this because I'm basically going to be reading some information. Uh, if you want to me to elaborate on anything else or if something's not clear. Okay. All right, so the first thing they're going to share with you is basically their, their, the gym core extractor. Um, Kudwar tells you it should be done by noon today, that they made really good progress over the night. They're just tweaking a few things and verifying a few things, and uh, they should be ready to go by noon, have the thing fully functional. So with that, he kind of gives you a breakdown of how this thing is supposed to work. Uh, he basically tells you that it's basically usually operated by one person, but it does require someone with some pretty decent strength to kind of manhandle. As you can imagine, it's a drill. It's going to be drilling into various types of materials and metals and, and whatever. So you need someone pretty strong to be able to uh, maintain that uh, a straight and true uh, drill path. 
Um, they are unsure how long and how deep they need this thing to drill. And he explains to you how the drill itself is not really like one continuous solid piece. It's like a drill that is almost like mage hand type of uh, uh, magic, if that, if you guys can understand that, where the drill goes down into the, the stone deeper and deeper, but there's nothing really in between the drill head and the actual apparatus that would be on the surface. But that's what maintains the, uh, I guess, the uh, straightness or the, uh, the power of the drill, so to speak. Okay, um, where was I? Okay, they're not sure how long and how deep you got to drill because it depends on where you are on the gemstone, how far you're in there. Uh, he says a yellow indicator on the gem handles where you, op where you operate it will light up as soon as the drill tip enters the correct depth or location. And he says at that point, you're going to press the blue indicator gem for six seconds, i.e. one round. This will enable the extractor portion of the drill, which will cut away a portion of where it's at inside the gemstone, and then return that back to the main unit on the surface. And he says, during the drilling process, it's very important to keep the drill straight. It says, any deviation in this may cause the drill to jam or possibly break off or lose your, your connection or your signal with the actual drill itself. He said, if it, at any point the red indicator light on this thing lights up, you're just stop. This means the drill has kind of lost its signal or it's overheating. Just you got to stop and let it get recalibrated before you continue moving forward. He said if you continue to drill while it's overheated or, or lost its signal, you may lose the drill itself. And I'll put all this in the chat and in the in the uh, campaign form as well, so you don't have to write this down right now. Uh, but they said that they had enough materials to make one backup drill. So they say if this happens. If you lose your signal or lose the drill somehow, you have to start a new drill path. You can't go through the same spot again because if the two drills hit each other, then you've lost both of them and they, they they're you're screwed basically. Okay. What? Yep. What's the weight of the drill in the realm of chaos? It should be pretty nothing, right? He said probably about as much as. And that's where Brevin will kind of chime in. Says the. the the weight in limbo is relative. Yes, uh, while we're there, and I'll explain this to you in more depth, I was letting Kudwar do his part first, but uh, once you're there, um, all movement is with thought, basically. And that's also how the Gith and how the Slotty can control the chaos around them. So while you're with me, um, I've learned to control it somewhat, not as good as Gith, but I plan on having some of the gift travel with us to help us with that. So as long as we're around them, the controlled chaos should be within our, our, our realm, our keep us safe, so to speak. But in, in reference to your question itself about the weight of the drill, it's not necessarily the weight of the drill. It's having the, the, the manpower to, to hold this thing and maintain it while it's going through all this material down below and it does not shift or move uh, in a different path as where the drill bit is underneath the surface, if that makes sense. Gotcha. And um, if it goes red, how many seconds do you want me to turn it off for? Uh, it's until you find the current back or it becomes unjammed. Uh, it, it could be as little as a second. It could be, I, we don't know. It just depends on okay. what you're hitting and what caused it. Right. Okay. Okay. Red stop, yellow, extract, blue, great. Okay. Also, when the blue thing, sorry, yellow means I'm ready to extract, blue means extract. Gotcha. Correct. Okay. Any other questions on this thing? How many, how many blue extractions do you need before you got enough material? All we need is one sample. Really? So if you're oh, successful cool. on your first one, that's all we need. Now, granted, if, oh, we'll if, get it if you don't have a threat and you can get more than one, then great, we'll take more than one because it never, never hurts to have a backup. But at the bare minimum, we need at least one to restore the, the talisman. Okay. Okay. And at that, he'll, he'll probably walk you guys down to where they're putting it together because it's almost complete. And you guys will see the thing. I mean, it's, it's not exactly a... Uh, 
a great looking mechanical thing. It, it's more about what it can do, less about what it looks. So it is kind of big and bulky. It's about the size of a standard gnome. So it's a decent size drill, is what you're seeing there. And he says, but I realize this thing's kind of big, and to lug it around is going to be a pain in the ass. And I know you guys have got bags of holding, but I've got something else here that it's up to you if you want to use it or not. And he kind of waves over to one of the other gnome tinkerers that are working on it. And he comes running over, and uh, he takes off this little pendant necklace, and he holds it out to uh, to Kudwar. And Kudwar takes, holds it up. So this pendant here is a magical pendant. It can hold one object uh, roughly the size of a, of a human being, and it will always be available to you to to call call forth it's kind of like a bag of holding but it's specialized for one thing so you can use this to kind of store the gym core extractor if you want or if you guys prefer to stuff it into your bag of holding that that's fine as well but it's yours if you want it that's i'll say wow that's that's fantastic um i'll give the bag of holding back to i think it's sylvia's isn't it so i have to yeah, I forget whose bag it was, but yeah. Yeah, I think it's Sylvia. So I'll give her the bag back and I'll tell her about the box that's in it with the worms. And I'll say, do you guys want me to manhandle the drill? So it's going to look at his, like, skinny lizard arms. It's going to look at you <laughs> and your big-ass paladin suit. <laughs> like, nah, I figured I would just do the whole thing. Oh, okay. I'll give you the necklace. Sar no, sarcasm <laughs> super strong oh, here. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> How about the rest of you guys? You want me to be drilling? You'll you'll protect me, right? Probably. Well, that's, oh, close. <laughs> that's a good answer. I'll try. I'll I'll put the necklace on if you guys are okay with it. So that's where we can put it in. One question: If you put the necklace in a bag of holding, will it have the same effect of ooh, opening up ooh, different realms? Kadwar says, Kadwar says no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Just to make sure. Sorry, I, I, I thought you all understood that. Do not do that. No. <laughs> yeah, I just so, You ever see Space Rupture sure before? <laughs> <laughs> Did he rides down on the back of it? Do not. Okay, good. <laughs> he goes, yes, always good where they put the warnings at the beginning, not the end. All right, so one more out-of-character thing with you guys. When you get to this point when you start using this, this is going to be basically a skill challenge. I don't know if you guys ever watch or listen to Matt Colville. This is where I originally got the idea. I'm sure he's not the one that invented it, but uh, it's basically a, a set of skill challenges that each of you guys will get a chance to uh, use your whatever you're proficient at to help this thing happen. So as an example, uh, what I'm looking for is basically six successes for this drilling thing to complete the process. That's why the, the timing to get there is going to vary. It just depends on how many successes you guys get. So the drill can basically drill up to X feet per round, but it must be operated by one person as their turn, and that takes their action to do that as well. Can okay? I like? Can I persuade it? Because like I can persuade anything. And that's what, <laughs> and that's what we're talking about. So just because you're skilled in something, if you can explain to me about how you use that skill, and it makes sense to me, then yeah. But if you explain this is something, the realm but of you, chaos, right? But if you explain something to me, I'm like, uh, that, you're way out in left field. You can still do it, but the DC is going to be a lot higher, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, like I said, <laughs> athletics to kind of keep the thing from going out of whack, um, to maintain a straight drill path, uh, it may get jammed, uh, it may overheat, just different things that you think you can do to kind of help with that type of a, a process. It's basically going to be a skill challenge. And once you guys get six successes, then you'll reach the destination where you can extract the thing out there. If we don't break it or do whatever else. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Again, again, I'll yeah, put yeah. more of that in kind of the uh, uh, the chat forum uh, after the session. But that's that's my intent with this uh, gem core extractor. How that's going to work. Okay. Any other, good. any other questions on the gem core extractor itself? Okay, I'll take as a no. Nope. Okay, next <laughs> thing. Who on their side is going to take the reserve one? The reserve what? Uh, the, there's two gem core extractors, right? So we no, have you've got that was one extractor, two blades. Yeah, like yeah. Drill bits. Uh, one extractor, two drill bits. 
Okay. All right, so cool. if one gets jammed or lost or broken, you got one more. But like you say, you, ever... you have to start your a new hole if if that happens. You can't go back into your existing one. So but it basically means six more skill challenge successes. Gotcha. All right. Did he? Okay. Yeah. You ever go ice fishing? Uh, no, not in Australia. You, know you know how it works. <laughs> oh, you're uh, not you... right. I'll say you put a hole in the ice and then you. So you use a giant fish. auger. Think yeah. okay. You ever drilled a hole for a, a fence post? Yes. Yeah. So you know, like the auger that spins and digs down in the ground. Yes. You're holding the motor on top. If the the blade on the bottom breaks off, you yeah. you have a replacement blade. Perfect. Now I understand. It, okay. Now, if you're doing that over ice fishing, you're doing that over water. So if the blade breaks off, it just ploop and it's gone. Yep. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Well, let's put one of the blades in a bag of holding and one of the blades uh, and one and one with me, so they're not together. Okay, that's fine. Sure. They, again, they can. They said you can do that. Uh, the entire thing can go on that pendant if you want to, including the two drill bits. It's it's considered no, one if they, thing. If they run away with me, then that's or they do well, something horrible. If if they get the necklace, we're done anyways. It doesn't matter where the spare drill bit is. What are we gonna do? Just whack it against the thing repeatedly? <laughs> oh, true, true. Um, I I still think it's a good idea just in case I get confused. You you guys keep the second blade somewhere. But that's up to you guys. I um, I, I was just thinking that may happen. These creatures are quite tough. Okay. All right. Any other questions on the whole gym core extractor? Okay. Oh, one more important thing about the skill challenges. Uh, the way this is set up is you can only use a skill that you're proficient in, and you can only use that attempt once. So if you're like Usul, he's like freaking awesome at perception. He can't just do six perception, whatever it is, challenges to, to pass it. Once he uses that skill, if he wants to know it has to be something else he's proficient in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, so next bit of information I'll share with you guys, and then we'll probably call it for the night. Uh, this is uh, Brevin explaining to you his plan uh, that he originally had to travel to Limbo and back. So uh, he talks about how he originally wanted to travel to uh, Yeshomar. That's the, uh, I guess, the home city of the Circle of Leth, the Elven city. And use a teleportation gate that is there in a, uh, well, I guess, it's going to be in a private place. It's not out in the open when he's telling you guys this. So he says the Gizarai have these things called, uh, um, shit, forget the name, Adamantine Citadels, I think that's what they're called. It's basically like these secret places that they place within the material plane when they're trying to hunt down or find mind flayers. And there's a secret one underneath the city of Yeshomar. And that's where he wants to take you guys there because using that teleportation within there will transport you directly to the Gith main city of uh, Shrakit Lore. Again, I'll put all this in the, the campaign form as well so you get all this. But he says from there, he plans on securing an astral ship and a crew of Gith Zerai. That will take them as close as you can to the spawning stone. Okay. However, he's also recently thought about uh, how they would get back if you got into trouble, so to speak. Now, they can't always rely on the gith and having their astral ships at the ready, especially when you get to the spawning stone. They need to be a way to quickly get back to where they need to go once they get that gem in case, you know, there's chaos or what else is going on there. So, he's been thinking about, and he... This is something he kind of says hesitantly, but he's, he shares with the guys. He's already shared this with Jodell and Kudwar, and they agreed that they want to use the Muckle Stones to find an alternate path out of Limbo, back to the Muckle Stones. He said, and, and those of you that know some of the history, he's going to go in a little more detail about that. He said the Muckle Stones is still kind of a, a mystery thing to them, but they're basically a a method of transportation within the material plane and also across planes. And that's part of Brevin's specialty. He's able to um, sense or detect these portals uh, within a certain range of him. And he's been kind of studying these things along with the druids to figure out where they may lead to. And he's found uh, one such gate that goes into the, uh, the limbo plane from the Muckle Stones. And he tells you that the location of where it is in Limbo is 
you never know what's going to end up. It's it's a it's an actual teleportation ring or source within Limbo, but it's constantly in flux, constantly being moved. He said there's even times when he's gone through that gate and it's just the big ball of fire that he opens up into. He said, however, the way that, and he shares with you, the, the his plan was to use Nimba's return potions to transport from the spawning stone once you have secured the, the gym core to this location that leads to the uh, uh, the Mucklestone Gate. So there's going to be some gamble there that when you show up, we'll have to quickly kind of try to control the chaos with our minds or wisdoms. But that will be our safest way to get back into the material plane because the return potions don't work across planes. Okay? So long story yeah. short, he wants to use the Muckle Stones, find the, the gate location where that exits within Limbo, and then establish the return potion spots. That's where the return potion works. You basically drop a drop on the ground or where it is. Then any time in the future when you drink that potion, it brings you back to where, the, where you place that drop. So use the muckle stones, find a spot in limbo, drop the uh, the potion there, head back to the material plane, go to the uh, Yashomar, enter the city of the Gizarai, and use them to kind of travel to the actual spawning stone, extract the stone, teleport back to that spot within limbo, back into the muckle stones. Uh, so how many of us are going on this trip? And Brevin will look at Joe Dell and says, uh, I would recommend as as many as we can. Honestly, I mean, we don't want to have, send an army in there because it's just like a big bullseye on us to the slotty that's in there. But uh, I my plan was to use a small skiff, and he'll explain to you guys a skiff is kind of like a, a small, light, fast ship that the Gizurai use. Uh, not really known for their hull strength or their damage, but they're quick, and uh, they have a way to... Uh, try to hide within the chaos as well. So he said to be a small crew of four to five people, plus uh, whatever we can can haul with us. So Silas so is be like, I can uh, I can bring a bunch of us back, potentially. Oh really? You have the power to uh, do this? Uh, let's see if I can link this spell to the. You got plane chat. shift. Uh, word of recall. Word of recall. Does that work on more than one up, person? Well, you and up to five willing creatures within five feet of you instantly teleport to a previously designated sanctuary. Okay. I does I can designate a sanctuary to de dedicated to my deity. You uh you put blade barrier up there. I got blade barrier linked to you, but I can relearn spells, right? Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. So that's a that's a level. Yeah, oh, I didn't. T no one knew about Blade Barry, but you yet. Sorry, now they know. I apologize. <laughs> it's cool. Uh, I I thought you'd like that since you really like the um the Spirit Guardians yeah. one. So I figured yeah. you'd, li you'd like that one too. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say to Brevin, um, is there uh, worms or eels that travel in the astral plane? Have you been? Uh, sorry, in the plane of Limbo. And he kind of he looks somewhat think? surprised that you asking him that. He says, uh. Where did you hear this? Uh, I saw it in a in a dream. Um, I'll explain what I saw. I said, um, my God said that we should not um, attempt any sort of like open combat in an area of um, you know complete desolation. But those worms definitely have something to do with it. So maybe the skiff, uh, but those worms will be involved somehow. So uh, what are they? So out of character, I gotta make sure I'm clear because you were calling those little things that were inside people worms. Is no, 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 the to? big flying worms. When my god pointed up into the sky and saw the okay. big, the ones I said look kind of like eels. Is that the one you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, those ones. Yeah, they're the ones. Okay. So as you explain that to him, he kind of looks at you somewhat surprised. He says, uh, "Yeah, those are those are the spawns. Sounds like of the guardian. It's what's got most of the." That's why most of the gith won't go near it. These things just... He kind of looks around and says, well, I just might as well tell you, we're going to see them anyway, probably. They just shoot out of nowhere, and they will pluck the gith off their ships and then carry them back to the Guardian. They're just lightning fast, and their sole purpose That's is great. to just 
rip people from the ships and take it back to its guardian now. Uh, they, the Gith have also told me they've seen these things as like scavengers, whereas and he'll go into a little bit of detail about the spawning cycle of the Gith, not the Gith, spawning cycle of the Slotty, of how they kind of come in droves. All the blues will come in for a season and do their mating cycle, then all the reds, then all the greens, and during this mating season chaos or whatever, sometimes the Slotty kill each other during it. And as their dead bodies are kind of floating around, these little worm eel things will just kind of shoot out, shoot out of the sky, grab them, and then bring them back to the Guardian. <laughs> oh, by the way, Brevin, um, the larva are, tra are transferred by the claw. I thought it would be the bite, but my friend Tommen got, only got clawed and he had one in him, so... Uh, somehow they can transfer those eggs into you or whatever it is via the claw. So, bye. Um, that's what you need to know. And it's uh, it seems to be the red ones and the blue ones. I'll just tell everybody here so they all know. Right. And Brevin will kind of nod a little bit. So I've, I've heard a little bit of that from the from the Gith as well, that they have the ability to somehow plant their eggs or whatever into to somebody. So... Perhaps we can ask the uh, the gift for more information. I've only heard it in passing. Didn't quite dig because I hadn't run across that until here recently. Well, not myself, obviously, but some of the refugees. And Diddy sort of smiles a little bit, and that's why we clean our fingernails, right? Because you don't know what grows <laughs> under them. <laughs> yes. Um, well, guys, uh, we, can, we can go. Um, those creatures... Uh, were pointed to that probably me did when I when he was pointing to did it feel like he meant you need them or avoid the hell out of them from your dream when my deity pointed up to them yeah did it feel a foreboding or required give me an insight yeah because that was um now I know what it is I go that sounds weird you know why would my god point me in the direction of these things uh there you go not 100% sure. It might have been just a warning. It might have been him telling you to go after him. I'll say maybe, maybe. Um, but they definitely <laughs> have a part to play. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last thing. Go ahead. Guys, is, is there any way we can use the gems to appear mentally or physically or something? Like the slot. So it's like, do they do they appear when they get hurt? Well, I I only know what you guys you guys extracted these things out of them, didn't you? And they look a lot like gems, which uh, we know the big thing that they all go to is also a gem. So I'm thinking each of them might take a part of the gem with them, but that might be their Achilles heel. It it might be how you can confuse them. I mean, if we if we don't enter into you know stand up battle, and I'll tell this to Joel Dill and Cudwell and and you know the deaths and all that sort of thing that I saw, you know, to not get into a a, a toe to toe with these guys, is there maybe we can ask the gift, um, the 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 gift that you guys were talking about? They just collect them as rewards, but they mustn't understand if there is a link to them or there isn't any at all. But is there when we get to the to the actual gem itself, there must be a connection either between themselves and the gem. Well, not must, but it sounds logical. That there's either a connection between them and their gem, or the gem and and something about them. Did, when I mean, when you pull the gem out, they must die anyway. I mean, you're ripping their heads off. But if um, is there any way? I wonder if you were able to somehow commune with the gem to commune with the, the the big stone can you somehow become part of that hive mind because they're like um they they're like insects the way they breed you know they've got a mother they've got a whole bunch of them come out at once they spawn i mean really whoever put this plan together 
I mean, it, it's technically really, really nasty, but there's a network. There's something there. Is there anybody amongst us that can somehow attune to the stone to see where it's going or what it did for the, um, for the slab? Are you asking me as a DM or are you asking the group? <laughs> I'll ask the group first and then I'll say, I think if we can work out the mystery of the stones and what they are, we might have an advantage. So it doesn't even recognize the stones. So, and they're, they're shiny too, so that's saying something. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing I can think of because they're inside the creatures. Heads. Yeah, Brevin will share that uh, it's maybe a question for the GIF once we get yep. in because like you said, you share with you guys or maybe Joe Dell share with you guys, I think it was Brevin, that these things are mounted all over the city as a trophy, so sure. to speak, for them. And in the Plains of Chaos, there is only Gith, Zerai, and the the Slard. Is there any anything else resonant in there? That, oh, you told me about something else as well. What, what's that third race? That Brevin told you? Uh, well, he's told me about the Gith Yankee. Uh, sorry, Gith Zerai, sorry. Yep. In game. And, and the slide. I'll say, is there any other races? There's the worms, like the big eels. Is mm-hmm. there anything else that's resident that we could maybe bring on our side as an ally or someone we need to watch out for? Um, oh, and the mind flayers, are they resident there? They're horrible. And Brevin will share with you that other than possibly some elemental beings, that could be within the plane of chaos because they can kind of live amongst and around the chaos that's already there. He said the, the predominant races there are going to be the Slotty and the Gizarai. And he said within the gotcha. Gizarai capital, I mean, they have a small, um, I guess, travel trade nation there that uh, races from other planes visit for trade. But he said no one else really makes it their home other than the Slotty and the, the Gizarai. Gotcha. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Yep. All right. Then that's, nope. what that's what we'll call it for tonight. Got lots of information. Uh, next session, you guys will have a chance to do whatever you want, but the Jim Court Extractor should be ready within a couple hours. I'll say right now it's roughly about 10 o'clock in the morning. So you got about two hours before the... Uh, uh, they say the Jim Core Extractor will be ready for you guys. So we'll have lunch first. <laughs> if you want, yes. Liquid we'll lunch. Travel on Monty's stomach. <laughs> Scylla and I might need to uh, have a short uh, rest at least. Yeah. Scylla's a little bit yeah. tired. Worn out. I thought, we, I thought we had that in the bath, but okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> we would have bathed for hours. Nice. Yeah, it was an hour, so you guys can do the whole, you know, one eighth to get your of your mana back during that rest if you mm-hmm. wanted to. But Ooh, all right. that'll be it. All right, guys. Any questions, comments, complaints about tonight's session? No, good session. Okay. Oh, good. I appreciate yeah, I'm that. Good here. Yeah, I think that uh, the whole infestation thing went uh, <laughs> a little bit different than I was expecting, but that was pretty fun. I enjoyed that, guys. So thank you. Very inventive. <laughs> It worked. Yeah, it did. That's pretty good. Just remember, Polymorph is not a cleric spell. (laughs) (laughs) Right. All right, guys. So that's it. Uh, We'll see you guys in two weeks. Oh, Seleth, while you're still here, um, you get a inspiration card for leveling up. I do? How do I get that? I'm going to deal it to you right now. Cool. I'm going to tell you. um, Go ahead. Did you fill everybody in what I emailed you or Facebook? Yeah. Yeah, everybody's aware of it. So, All right. and I, my condolences for you, but I know I can't imagine going, going through that. So just know that, uh, my thoughts and prayers have been with you during this time, man. That sucks. Same here. That's appreciated. I just, I didn't know if anyone knew. I just, I wasn't just flaking out on you guys or anything. I just, yeah. No, completely understand. Yeah, you had other things to deal with. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> All right. So you got your, uh, your inspiration card and everybody else should be, if you're not already, uh, level 11. Like I said, my email, I think I said I was going to tell you some of you guys only at level 10, but screw it. You guys all be at level 11. That way we're all even, and I'm good with that. Yay. All right. Okay. Excellent session, guys. 
See right. you in two weeks. Yep, I'm gonna stop See the recording. You in a weeks. <sighs> I should definitely be able to make it for that one. And uh, I'll, I'll make it on time. <laughs>